When the game gets rough and this life just seems so tough, make we talk, my people, make we talk. When this town becomes an ugly place, don't let it erase the smile from your face. Make we talk, people, make we talk. Conversation is the key. A guiding light for you and me Spark a talk and you will see Conflict solver A to Z World leaders master the art of self-defense Just by talk So people make we talk Hey, we're living in a world that on ourselves we must depend Make we talk People mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the game gets rough And this life just seems so tough Make we talk My people Make we talk when this town becomes an ugly place Don't let it erase the smile from your face Make we talk, people, make we talk Conversation is the key A guiding light for you and me Spark a talk and you will see Conflict solver A to Z World leaders master the art of self-defense Just by talk, so people make we talk Hey, we're living in a world that on ourselves we must depend Make we talk, people Good night, good night everyone. Welcome to the Make We Talk program. Right here in the Make We Talk YouTube channel. It's a lot of things going on around the world and indeed in the land of wooden water. But there is no water. We're having a problem. First of all, remember to like, share and subscribe. This evening topics are Negril residents, protest lack of water and bad road. The three political parties, three independent political parties in Jamaica joined forces. And there is a humanitarian crisis in Haiti where the UN is saying over one million people is facing hunger and starvation. We're going to speak about that. We also have with us Herb Nelson Jr. We're going to have um, Luke George Cook and Finzi Smith. And also Mr. Michael Williams of the National Democratic Movement coming on. But before we go any further, let us deal with my hometown. I grew up I'm not afraid to talk about this. I grew up in Negril. Born and, born and raised in Negril. And Negril is a resort town. And I bet any money. The hotels in Negril have water. But the people who build Negril. The people who put Negril on the map. Tonight they're out of water. The western road of Negro don't have any water. Red ground don't have any water. Good Hope don't have any water. And we can go on and on and on and on. The two political parties in Jamaica. The People's National Party has run West, Western Westmoreland for years. Father Kenneth McNeil and son Wickham McNeil. Before that you have Buxton Cook of the Jamaica Labour Party. And the two political party hasn't done one single thing for Negril. Not one single thing. There was a water tank that was built by the NWC at the foot of the Presbyterian church there. I won't call the lovely lady name who died. She helped raise me. 
But there's a water tank that's what, that, what was built there. And nothing has been done to that water tank till it just go out and broke down like anything. Why I'm saying all of this? It is a shame and disgrace that the people of Negril is calling for water. Back in the 1990s when Minister Robert Pickers Gill was Minister of Water for the People's National Party. They spent billions and billions of dollars to get water from Lagwood. Good afternoon. I must say good night to my auntie who's watching from Canada. And to my other auntie who's watching from the grill. Let me say this to you all. I don't mean more, I don't mean when I'm talking, you know, because I'm talking the facts. Negril is a resort town. And the people who help to put Negril on the map do not get one thing from the government of this country. And now this now tonight, there is no water. I was saying that they, they build a water tank down there and nothing has been done. Robert Pickers, he was Minister of Water back in the 1990s under the under the P.J. Patterson administration. They spent billions of dollars to get water from Lagood. From Lagood into Negril. I have with me my good friend Herb Nelson Jr. We're going to speak about Haiti next. They spent billions of dollars to get water from Lagood into Negril. And for for the both political parties I can remember, Negril has been out of water. The people of Western have been buying water. The tank break down and nobody looked to fix it. The property is, 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 is being um, taken over by hoodlands. Don't be surprised if someone in a cell that piece of land at the NWC own. On the foot of the hill going up to red ground. There is no water. I'm going to show a video tonight. It was sent to me. By some good friends of mine in the grill. I won't call name because I don't want anybody to look for my family. This is this is this is the um this is what is going on. Be respectful to the police. Please be respectful to the police. Have respect for the police. Like, 
force to move it. Right. Just let the police them call the people them acting nicely. Right. And then they remove it because you don't really want as soon as the police them gone. No. Then black it back. No, that's what the JDF has been dispatched already to come here. And then when they gone, then black it back. The JDF has been dispatched to come to this location. Based on what is happening. All right. This is called a trust that is not really necessary at the moment. However, I understand you guys' situation. Yes. I know what is happening. I know how you really feel about it. The water condition has, yes. has really gone to the most deplorable um, situation. And, and as a matter of fact, we need to start to clear the road now so the tourists can pass easily. What is about free water? I must apologize for the expletives. I see some familiar faces. But this has been going on for many years. I reached out to the, one of the counselors. I haven't got any result, any um, answer from them. I've also reached out to the Member of Parliament, Mr. Molan Wilson, who is also the Member of Parliament for that area for the Labour Party. See it? Swiss action is necessary to address the water situation in Negril. And this has been going on, Mr. Nelson, from I was a boy growing up. And until now, it has not solved. Nobody solved the problem. And every five years, we have been swapping black dog for monkey. We swap one family. I may not care who one vex this evening. The people of Negril, the people of Western Westmoreland. And who wants them a pain? You know, so be it. Who wants them a Labour Party member? So be it. The truth is the truth. The people of Western Westmoreland have a dynasty family that run Western Westmoreland for many years. The McNeil family. Father Kenneth McNeil. And son Wickham McNeil of the People's National Party. And they've done nothing to help the residents of Negril. And every five years they come around. And they promise you this and promise you that. Now I don't blame the people of West End. I know shouldn't block every single road in the Negril. You all remember the 1990s gas riot? You all remember in the 1990s, the Red Hat police officers who came to Negril and beat up a, a pregnant woman on the black, the, 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 the Negril bridge. Now, I, I am not advocating for anything, you know. But the time has come for government to do something. When last have they built a water reservoir in Jamaica? Negril is a big tourist resort area. And you're saying to me, the people who govern this country don't see it fit to build a water reservoir for Negril? But the hotels on the Seven Mile beaches, they're they, they not, they, they, they not lack of water, you know. Them have water 24-7. They have water 24-7. I'm, I'm not going to open up the phone line yet. Um, whosoever is watching me here. What's up in me here? I'm going to open up the phone line, but not now. Anybody who born and grow in the grill, who is watching this program, call me. You have my number, call me. And if I'm lying about the water situation in the grill, tell me, say a lie. The hotel and the seven mile beach in the grill. They always have water, but the people of Red Ground and Western have to always buy water. Always buying water. 
Nothing has been done to assist the water problem in Negril. Yes. The hotels have water. The hotels have water. I reach out to the chamber of the, the, the president of the Negro Chamber of Commerce. No answer. I reach out to the counselor in the Grangeal division pertaining to the, the gruesome murders that's going on in Grangeal. At least he answered me and told me that, you know, Mr. Tavares, I can't come on and comment about that as yet. I know the newly elected counselor for Negril is a bit busy at the moment. But if you're watching this program, new elected counselor, you have my number. Call me. We need to know when the residents of West End or the residents of Negril are going to get water. We need to know when they're going to fix the road in front of the Hilo supermarket. The Prime Minister of Jamaica went down there. Nearly 2.30 2 in the morning campaigning for local government election and promising people them a whole bunch of lies. Like when he promised Clarkstown in Trelawney. He's going to make Clarkstown in Trelawney become the Silicon Valley of Jamaica. <laughs> in 21st century Jamaica, we are well renowned around the globe as the land of wood and water. And in 21st century Jamaica, the people of this country don't have any water. Mr. Nelson, your views on that, sir? Well, th this is not news to the land of wood and water, that we have the wood and we have no water, right? There is um, a, not a cousin of mine that ran for office or wanted to run for office in Northwest Clarendon. And that has been an uh, outcry in that neck of the woods. And um, that area has been, you know, voting for the government for a while. But that hasn't caused them to get in the water. But what do mm -hmm. we have to look at? What we need to look at is the fact that the country has two reservoirs that they're largely dependent on. And those reservoirs, Jeffrey, have not been producing to the satisfaction of the Jamaican people. Yes. Right? Jamaica's problem is exacerbated by um, th those um, limitations. Now, if they can diversify water sources, and I know young Samuda is the one that I see out there a lot, turning on spigots in neighborhoods, showing that the people are getting water, but they're hmm. still coming up short. Jamaica has to explore alternative water sources beyond reservoirs, and that includes groundwater, Desalin desalinization and rainwater harvesting. Some people catch the rainwater whenever it rains, whether it's a storm. Uh, you have all that storming done in the last two months. And you have to ask the question, how many people was able to catch the rainwater coming on the roof? and mm -hmm. direct it to tanks and store that in, 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 the, in the tanks so that they would have water to, for usage. Um, groundwater, they have to look at, well, Jamaica has water on the ground. They need a, to be able to punch 200 feet down or so to be able to get to that well water source and to process it into drinking water and water for bathing and, and watering and all that stuff. Hold on for me, Mr. Nelson. I have a call on line. A, a resident of Negril want to speak. Hello, okay. caller. Good night to you. Good night. Good night, Mr. Nelson. Good night, Mr. Tavares. How are you both? I'm doing good. Well. Here, here sucking saw through a wooden spoon. Hello, caller. It's a really bad, sad situation <laughs> that Negril, the tourist 
parish of Jamaica and they can't have water. Negril people living in Negril don't have water, but I'm pretty sure all the hotels are with water. And the residents of Negril, the people <coughs> of Negril who have been there for years and years and years don't have water. It's a bloody shame. It's a crying shame. It is. Let me ask you a question, caller. I'm, I'm pretty much sure you're from Negril. You born and grow in Negril. And have this been a problem for years in Negril, caller? Nothing has changed over the years. Nothing has changed. My God. So you Nothing has changed. If you feel the same, it is still the same and nothing has changed. There is nobody who cares about the people living there. The people who build the country, no one cares about them. Nobody cares. Let me answer a question, caller. You grew up in Negro. And yes, I'm pretty much sure you know what I'm talking about. When at the, the foot of the Presbyterian Church is there, going up red ground, there's a big yes. water tank there where it is yes. no longer there anymore. If my memory serves me correctly, my godmother told me that, that, and my grandfather also, who was in the parish council, told me mm -hmm. that that tank mm -hmm. was supposed to put water up red ground. It was supposed to, as far as I know, yes. Have you ever seen have you ever seen anything done to that tank, ma'am? No. No. Nothing has been done over the years. It stayed there till the water stayed there and stagnant until the tank is now broken down and no one does anything about it. Mm. We're calling on the the member of parliament for Western Westmoreland, Mr. Molan Wilson. And the new elected councillor. To please call this program or come on this program or address the water situation in the grill. This is 21st. And they're not America. going to. Pardon me? They're not going to. They're not going to. Because they don't care. No one cares. They're not going to call. Hmm. And yet the government have at a $1.3 trillion budget, ma'am. And out of that $1.2 trillion budget, I don't see anything about water. What I see is a $2.6 billion to buy 100 buses for the Jamaica for the Jamaica Urban Transport Company, and the Urban Transport Company is owned by the government. Can't so everything is going back, going back to the government and into server pockets. There but is. they don't give, they don't care, they do not. There is no heart within these people. There is no heart. They don't care about Jamaicans. They do not care about Jamaicans, period. My, 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 my. Caller, thank you for calling in. Jeffrey. Thank you. Ma'am, are you still there? Hold on for me, yeah, hold on for me, caller. Mr. Ness, I want to say something to you. Hold on a minute. Go ahead. Okay. Ma'am, how many of the local residents in the grill understand that they can attempt water storage in other words they can innovate underground storage tanks aquifer storage um any kind of modular systems to store water that they can use for everyday use it, what, yes um what is the practice mm -hmm. of the residents in storage, storing water that you're aware of? Some, as far as I know, some do have those black tanks or black drum as they call them. Yes, some do, but there are times when there is no water in the pipe to fill it when it's, it's being used or there's no rain to catch anything. So 
if they have rain a week, then they don't have rain for another month or two. And the water is used to do everything in the whole soul. And uh, there should be water in their pipe because at the end of the day, they're charging them so much money for water that they're not getting. Okay. But but they, the fact is, if you're doing a diversification of water supply, it shouldn't be at the moment, right? It should be long-term. So long-term, if you create catchment from your roof, you have, do you have a flat roof or do you have a, a, a roof that is um, uh, contoured? Most of the people in Negril, Mr. Nelson, most of the people in Negril has, some have flat roof, some have cave, uh, you know, the, the, the roof that water can run off. Right. And some of them, they do mm -hmm. have they do have drums that they catch water. I don't think I don't think mm -hmm. the majority of the people in Negro can afford to build an underground water catchment system. Yeah, but 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 that means that the local government and the national government must recognize that and provide underserved communities with the ability to catch their own water. Them not care about the people. All they care about is the tourists that come down there. And the hoteliers, they don't care about Negro people or other people in um, other <laughs> community. They don't. Is, is they don't. There, has there been a demand for it by the population? For what? Because for we, water catchment? Yeah, we, we demonstrate here in Florida, ma'am, and we're going to demonstrate in New York. Because we believe that a corrupt system exists that does not look out for the welfare of the people. So while we're protesting we need you to bring up these subject matters to the local parish council and to your mps because that should be a part of the protest also you're not getting the services that you're now paying your mps 20 million dollars a year to give you you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. 20 million is a lot of money for them to be sitting down there and the same thing keeps happening and there's no alternative plan that they have outlined to you that they plan to incorporate. So you yeah. have to get these alternative plans in place. And these things will help to alleviate the problem you have with day-to-day -day water supply. Right? Rainwater can be harvested and stored. But they need to give you the ability to construct storage tanks, right? To capture the, the seasonal water. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So you don't and, have the water, yes. 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 But not not many Jamaicans can afford. So that's where the help would come in. Yeah. So so that is a plan that you can take to the parish council and ask them. If you, if you know the numbers of Jamaicans that are underserved, uh, what's the population of Negril, by the way? I don't remember, you know. Uh, Ma'am, do you know? No, I don't. I don't remember myself. Okay. So if you can find the population of Negril, how many households are in Negril? And how many households that don't have adequate water systems or water supply, then then let's come up with a plan that you can present to the local government. Okay, you have mm -hmm. uh, 40,000 homes throughout the, the parish and only 15,000 can afford adequate water supplies. Let's come up with a plan that will give what? 15 from 40 is 25, 25,000 homes, the ability to store water. And that, to me, will alleviate the problem because Jamaica has not done anything about a new reservoir in decades, right? And but, without but, but, a new reservoir happen. system, you're going to be losing every time. But you know something, sir? Yeah. I remember they built some water catchment system of Lagwood in Hanover. Yeah. That's supplying Negril. 
no rolling river that is in Sablamar. I think they had done something to get some water from rolling river. The rolling river, I remember that point. Yes, right. yes, they but, did but, from the rolling river, but I'm not sure how well it is being or how it's been serving the people. That's another thing again. Well, they spend they say... billions of dollars in these things, but at the end of the day, the people don't get the water. Yeah. Now, who, who did the logwood plant? Because they said the logwood plant is underperforming. It is not performing now. It was right. done under the People's National Party government in and, the 1990s. And, and how long ago was that? In the 1990s. Mm -hmm. and, and what has happened since that has caused it to underperform and then shut down? I don't remember what happened. At one point, I said one of the pumps wasn't working. I remember that much. I, 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 can, I can call a schoolmate of mine who lives in the area who was her father and my grandfather was very good friends. And they, they, they have a lot of knowledge about what is going on. Okay. But this, this is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Caller, thank I... you for calling in. Thank you. Have a blessed night. Same to you. You too. Okay, what's going on? Oh. Hello, good night. Welcome to Make We Talk. Hey, good night, uh, Jeffrey. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Good, man. Um, good evening, uh, Dr. Herb. Good evening to you, sir. Yes, um, it is unfortunate uh, with this water problem in the grill. However, I'm, I'm compelled to point out that this issue is right across Jamaica. Is this, where, ju is this justice? Yes. Hey, how are you doing, man? Good, man. Good, good, good. Hmm. Yeah, this issue is right across Jamaica, you know? And um, I'm speaking about even the corporate area. The truth is, one, the Jamaican population has grown over the years. And those in leadership have been somewhat thought cited. The, the reservoir that we have there, they are in dire state of uh, uh, repair. disrepair. And that has not been um, sorted out. We would have had rainy seasons. And you hear that a lot of the water that we were hoping to catch escaped from the dam because the dam is leaking. I believe too, that as long as you have councillors and members of parliament for an area, there is no reason why the citizens should be forced to fend for themselves. If you vote for political representatives, they should represent you in ensuring that you have water in your pipe. Jamaica has a big problem with accountability. And these same people, they don't like themselves enough. Hmm. We talk about the politicians don't love the people. The people don't love themselves. Because if the people love themselves, I'm sure when election comes tomorrow, you're going to see them jumping up in orange shirt and in green shirt. And the day after that, when the officers are elected, they're still there with no water in their pipe. And it happens over and over and over again. And the politicians get away with it. And the people suffer because the people don't love themselves. Hmm. They're not united. So true, sir. So, so true. But the curry goat is finished now, you know. And the excitement is finished now. And really, so and, I am and really to see it. what representation will be made on behalf of the people 
in the various constituencies. Hmm. You're so correct, Justice. Justice, thank you for calling in. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. There you have it. We're not going to take any more calls until the end of the, until the end of the program. We're going to switch gear now. We're supposed to have Mr. Michael Williams to come on to speak to us about three independent political parties has joined forces together. But for the time being, we're going to switch to something else. The residents of Negril, the People's National Party, have Westmoreland locked to the T for many years. And I will not apologize to neither he, she, nor the old lady. And I hope Mr. Mark Golden is listening to this program, which of that sometimes they do. The People's National Party have not served the people of Westmoreland well in Osa. The People's National Party members of Parliament, the Wick, the McNeils, have not served the people of Western Westmoreland and Negril well in Osa. They are the one who put Negril on the map. And I don't have to call names of family members or the, the families in Negril who put Negril on the map. The people of Negril come out of their houses and give to the hippies back in the days. Or the hippies that come down to, to Negril and pitch their tent in, the house, in, in, in their yards. And that's how tourism started in Negril. The people of West End, the people of the Seven Mile Beach, the people of Red Ground, the people of Mount Erie, they are the ones who start tourism in Negril. And the People's National Party has neglected Negril for many years. So I can't blame the Labour Party alone. Blame the People's National Party representation in Negril. They are the ones to be blamed. They haven't done enough. Look at Negril. When you enter Negril, Negril looks like a shanty town. Like some ghetto. Because there's no any proper town planning for Negril. None. This is this is what is going on in this country. Welcome, Mr. Luke George Cook, to the program. This is what is going on to the, to, 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 this is what is going on in the grill. The people of this country pay the taxes. But the people of the Vum Vavon, the Vum Vavi can get water. I'm pretty much sure the first hotel on the seven mile beach in Negril is owned by some people. Them have water there though. I am pretty much sure the first hotel on the seven mile beach in Negril. That is owned by some people of the Vum Vavon, the Vum Vavi. There's water in their pipes though. But the people who put the X beside the head and the bell have no water. The Prime Minister went down there to look on the road in front of the Hilo supermarket and until now nothing has been done. I don't blame them should black the entire Negril. Anyway, I can't behave myself tonight before I get a car so you for behave yourself. We have Mr. Luke George Cook on and uh, Mr. Herb Nelson Jr. Sir Herb, we're going to switch to what is going on in Haiti, what Jamaica. You know, a lot of people are saying that, Mr. Nelson, that Jamaica shouldn't do anything to help Haiti, you know, because Jamaica need help themselves. Mr. Uh, Nelson? I, I sincerely hope that they would think twice before saying that because what's been happening... Yes. If they see a trickle of Haitians coming into Jamaica, now, think about a full-fledged war or full-fledged uprising in Haiti. How many of those 11 million Haitians will be getting into small boat craft and just heading out to sea? Heading to the nearest shores they can find. So they need to think hard and deep that to prevent that, 
we must do something now and not try to wait until it's gotten so bad that you have to take drastic action to control the exodus of migrants to within countries of the Caribbean. And again, Jamaica, by its proximity, is accessible for the 11 million Haitians that would be impacted and would have maybe enough money and uh, you know, have the right boats and stuff to pack all the stuff and head for Jamaica. Because they've been doing that for decades and Jamaica with its porous borders have not been able to stop people coming in and out of Jamaica. So like Trinidad and Venezuela, Venezuelans, five million of them left Venezuela and mm. about a million of them have completely overrun the shores of Trinidad. And the Trinidadian government has had to come up with alternative plans and budgets to accommodate those Venezuelans. So we see the same potential problem rearing its ugly head in Jamaica. You know, the Asian crisis has been escalating. Why? Because the gangs have seized upon the opportunity to flex the muscles, get rid of the prime minister, which they now have. And then the next step is to try to dictate to the ruling um, council that has been appointed. I don't have all the particulars on that ruling council and whether or not they have appointed a new prime minister. That, that's, that should be the first move they make. Appoint a leader. They have done that as yet. Right. They need to appoint a leader amongst themselves. But Haiti is experiencing waves of violence. They have displaced, internally displaced people, over 15,000 in just one week, right? The gangs are ravaging the country. They caused the mass displacement, human rights abuses, and instability. And, a, and, it, and the United Nations is saying over 1 million people facing starvation and hunger? Yes. And then you have a system of illicit arm flows that goes into the population. Right? So you have illicit arm flows and ammunition and you have 1 million people displaced. People are going to rise up and take whatever it is they need to survive. Mm. Looting at the main ports and and uh, They've seized about over 300 containers of life-saving aid or put it at risk, which is hindering the humanitarian efforts into the communities. So if that appeal to the gangs, it would be to ensure that the humanitarian uh, shipments remain intact and allow an orderly distribution of that uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I Hold on there, Mr. Nelson. Something coming across my phone here about Negril. I know we have switched the conversation, but somebody sending me something about Negril. And the person is saying that Neither the member of parliament, the sitting member of parliament, has not reached out to the residents of Negril as yet. And they still haven't any water. They haven't chucked any water into the area. Lord have his mercy. Luke George Cook, you're here with us. Yes, Jeffrey. How are you doing? I'm good. You see what is going on in the resort town of Negril? Look. Look. Elections have consequences. 
Go ahead. Sorry. Elections have consequences. The people need to form the Negro People's Council. And that is independent of those that are Diat Laborite and Diat PMP. And they must push the municipality, the local government, to ensure that those fundamental rights that people have must be protected. The right to life, the right to food and water. Now, it begs it begs to, to wonder what is the level of the intelligence of our government. These problems that people have been experiencing from time to time memorial should have been solved. Had Jamaica not been so po polarized by the phenomenal of the Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party, it should have been solved. People want water. Come on, water is life. And for people in 2024 still having to block the roads while our political dynasties are trying to put their foot down on a hole, on a further hole on the people, it is deeply sudden. Now, I would have thought that the days of suffering had ended and the days of prosperity are the days in which we live. But it only goes to show these are campaign slogans. Um, we have to make sure that the people in the real who can look beyond their political um, affiliation unite and go out there and ask that these things be addressed. Um, there are some efforts that that takes blocking a road, but there are some that takes long-term strategy and planning. And anybody who can come to the table now to deliver on these things, then you just have to know, so look here, <laughs> it's, it's either performance or you leave. There's no two way about it. Hmm. But following on Herb's point, uh, I see a jump from <laughs> Haiti. It's interesting that Haiti, though, Herb, the Asians don't try to get into Dominican Republic, their closest neighbor, who have just built a wall like the one at the United States border, whose GDP is better than Haiti. And you wonder, Jeffrey, if hmm. Herb, as well as Herb, is Haiti paying a deep price for being the first independent English-speaking Caribbean country in the Caribbean because they fought off their oppressors? In addition to that, that they have derived from their, their um, slave masters, people who just want to enrich themselves at the expense of the Haitian people because the death of the, the murder of the Haitian Prime Minister, and now we hear the President, sorry. Um, now that we hear his wife might have a hand in it, but this guy, he handpicked this guy two months before his assassination and shortly after coming, and it is large, I believe, Herb Nelson, that each Haitian president have their own militia gang that they work with once they come into power to make sure that the the labor government are are, are chasing and feel fear uh, feel fear who could it be that we are still suffering from the residue of slavery in this regard because it's amazing that dominica and republic share such a close border with the, with almost the same population size of 12 million people, but they are not suffering and they don't have that level of tribal war that now almost 22 gangs have taken over the whole of Haiti. And this is something that has been in the making. 10 people are captured each day in the streets of Haiti and are held for ransom. Um, putting military boots on the ground, the Nigerian with the Jamaican and the other Caribbean country. The Kenyans. The Kenyans. Sorry. The, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the correction. 
Um, how is that going to help her? Is it going to be more debt? You have in 2003, 23,000 Asian have died. Um, how much how much more blood has to be spilled in Haiti for us to get a solution to the Haitian crisis? And what does that solution look like? Well, you know, let me look at the DR question first. DR and Haiti has always had this complex um, relationship marked with tensions, conflicts, and their cultural differences. A lot of Haitians work on the plantations in DR. And we see where DR pushed them all out of the country at one point. I don't know if they ever took them back. But not only have they pushed them out of the country, but they also decided that with this canal that the Haitians were building, right, that the, the construction of the canal and the Haitian soil would divert water from a river shared by both countries. Now, the Haitian government is adamant about building the canal and emphasizes it's important to the country. The DR views it as a violation of a treaty and a threat to its farmers and the environment in the DR. So in response to these conflicts, naturally what the DR government did was to close the border. Hmm. Right? So nobody got to work across there. And the, the water itself um, the DR has reopened the old canal that will give their farmers adequate supply of water. Now, they, they have been efforts to improve relations, but the cooperation remains challenging. Too many deep-rooted issues between them, you know, and, and they have to find common ground and address all these grievances and maintain the peace. They actually have a river, they call it the Masaka River, near Dajabon, that secure water for the local farmers of the DR. And that Masaka River is based on a killing of Haitians by the DR, that whose blood flooded that river. They just wiped them out in the river. So that, that, that's what they call it, the blood something or another? The Haitian something or another river? Yes. Okay. So so this is the kind of tension that you're dealing with um, in, in, in Haiti. And one that could really trigger the type of conflict that will send both Haitians and Dominicans in. You know, the black Dominicans catch hell from the, the white Dominicans in the country as well. Yes. So it's not just a question of the Haitians having to leave, but some Dominicans might be uprooted as well and have to find shelter someplace else. So in the long run, you're going to have to have peace being maintained between Dominica and Haiti as well as between Haitian elements, right? We only talk about Port-au-Prince in the South, but you have other sections of Haiti that are in a, actually um, prosperous. But the Haitians of the Port-au-Prince are not allowed into those districts. So they are controlling those districts for the same reason Water is controlled in the grill that goes to the hotels. The <laughs> districts I'm talking about are controlled so that the white folks who go there on vacation from Europe and from the U.S. and Canada can feel comfortable. So they don't want a bunch of poor people up in these areas. So you do have a division inside of Haiti, as well as a division inside of Hispaniola, which is what the complete 
island is known as, which is DR and, and Haiti itself. Now, if indeed you deploy uh, troops from Benin, 2,000 troops, another 1,200 police officers from Kenya, you have 3,200 hardened, trained troops that can help the Haitian National Police, which you saw overwhelmed by the gangs in Haiti. They were overwhelmed. The, the gangs went, released up to 4,000 prisoners from those prisons. So that's 4,000 more members now that the gangs have an armed ready to challenge to run the country and to try and keep the foreign forces out mm. so uh, if you're gonna have a lawlessness that can spawn a lot of panic and people leave in the country and you don't need that jamaica doesn't need that because jamaica would be busy rescuing people from the ocean because they're coming in all kinds of rickety boats that they can find or they can put together with all their possessions to come to the island so as, as, as you talk about that mr nelson yeah i want to welcome um robert finzi smith and chairman of the national democratic movement mr michael williams before we go to those two distinguished gentlemen I want to play a video that comes out of South Florida, where the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has deployed a lot of National Guard along the U.S. border, the um, Florida border, the panhandles of Florida and so forth, because they expect an influx of Haitians coming in. Listen to this. to the current crisis in Haiti. The Caribbean country is in the midst of a political meltdown where gangs run over 80% of Port-au-Prince. Now the U.S. military is sending an anti-terrorism team to protect the American embassy there. And at the same time, Governor DeSantis is sending more officers and soldiers to South Florida and the Keys. As WPTV's Todd Wilson explains, he is trying to stave off any new undocumented immigrants from Haiti. Coming up. Agents with Customs and Border Protection reported responding to four to five migrant encounters in the past month. Nearly all migrants on board were Haitian. Haiti native France Banu says you can't blame his people for leaving. You're forced to do that. If, 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 if I was there, I would do so because the situation is so bad. You, you, you have to leave where there is no life. Governor DeSantis is concerned undocumented immigrants are on the way as Haiti continues to struggle with violence, poverty, and political unrest ever since the assassination of its president, Jovenel Moïse, in 2021. To cut down on the possibility of more undocumented immigrants coming to Florida, Wednesday afternoon, Governor DeSantis ordered 39 additional officers from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. 23 officers and eight added sea craft from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, 48 guardsmen with four helicopters from the Florida National Guard, plus 30 more officers with aircraft and drones from the Florida Highway Patrol. Immigration lawyer Bill Gerstein says it's a real possibility more undocumented immigrants from Haiti are on the way. They could, and, and if they do take the route by sea, it's extremely dangerous. In a statement, DeSantis said, no state has done more to supplement the under-resourced U.S. Coast Guard's interdiction effort. We cannot have illegal aliens coming to Florida. In Palm Beach County, Todd Wilson, WPTV, News Channel 5. That is what Ron DeSantis is doing. <laughs> So the, 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 the question tonight, Mr. Nelson and Major Finzi Smith, Chairman of the National Democrat Movement, Mr. Michael Williams and Luke George Cook. If Ron DeSantis is doing that, and, and people may say, Jeff, why are you asking this question? Mr. Nelson, then Jamaica need to do something more than so if they ever come to the airport. 
Because apparently there is something going on in Jamaica right now where they're returning back the Haitians back to Haiti. Well, I know Jamaica's embroiled with this uh, lady lawyer and maybe Michael or uh, Robert. I've been trying to get her to come on the program without any success. Yeah, well, you know, she's busy. And she's busy fighting Jamaica's immigration stance against the Asians. And like I said to you, managing 11 million people in a country with this upheaval is not an easy task. So you could have, like Venezuela, you could have a quarter of that population easily bolting away from the island. And a quarter of that population would be two to three million people coming in whatever they put their hands on. Whether it's a bathtub with oars or it's a boat with an outboard motor or some um, ship that they can get started and have it cross the, um, the hundred or so miles, they would be coming. And, and at that point, the UN and the US and Canada certainly would have to do a lot more to uh, reinforce and reimburse Jamaica's coffers to take care of this population. Jamaica would so have what happened to the do. French? What happened to the French that is still bailing out a significant amount of the um, well, natural resources? Well, if you note know that the French has a military training program they're executing right now in um, in the Caribbean waters, right? And nobody has asked the question, why would you carry out exercises in Caribbean waters in such great numbers? Maybe the French would want to, take back to move in and take a more aggressive role in containing what's happening in Haiti, which would spark a massive backlash because they're the ones that moved out or were thrown out to, at the U.S. to take the gold and the money from the um, Haitian banks and cause this problem to be so long-term. Yeah, I let the gentleman comment, um, but this is, this is how I'm seeing things. It's been a long time coming. <clears throat> yep. But the French may have eventually come to take back Haiti. And may have the perfect excuse to do so. <laughs> Aided and possibly well, abetted by the United States. You're using that chairman... Well, the first thing I will say is that I agree with the government of Jamaica's policy right now to send them back. But there's no place to send them back to because the airports are not functional and the, and the seaport and the wharves are not functional. So there's going to be a dilemma to send them back. But look at what happened in Cayman. There are more Haitians in Cayman now than there were there are Cayman Cayman citizens. I thought there were there were more Jamaicans in, in Cayman more than, than Caymanians. No, there's more Haitians there now. Right? Around. So, and, and because Cayman is one of the first, first places that they go because of the current, the sea current. Now as far as what I believe should happen to Haiti is that the people in Haiti have rejected what was proposed. So I believe that they should make them wait two or three more weeks and I can go on. Right? <laughs> and who come who, go, who reach the United States they have to deal with them because they can't send them back. There's no place to send them back to. No airport can land, no plane can land, and no no wharf. 
So it's the same dilemma in Jamaica, right? But eventually, they have to go back because we can't even manage what we have right now. So I just say what we should do is wait it out. And if the forces that Herb talk about is available, backed up by some French, whoever go inside the 80, have to go in with some very big gun and have to be prepared to use it. Because it's pure lawlessness going on there. Right? And a lot of innocent people going to die. But it's pure lawlessness. Right? So, Michael. And the, the, and the, 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 Michael, the end game the is the first point. sending the big gun. What? Michael. What I, I didn't hear you say strategically with strategic with sending in the big guns and 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 and, and letting the let them crush the over two hundred gangs or twenty odd gangs that are now taking over. What is the long what is the long term development for Haiti? What the is the what is by Caricom. That it is a what is, in what is that, Michael? The, the what is that? The, the long term position was developed by CARICOM in terms of bringing, bringing back law and order into the place, having them elect one of their own from Haiti and rebuild them army and rebuild them police and the international community must put pressure on France to send back the money that them take from them. Them start to take that from them from long time. They finished paying it off in, in, um, think in about uh, 1945 or something like that. But they must send back that money. France can afford to send it back. It's not France. It's Citibank. Well, where it is? Where City where it Bank is? was founded on the looting <coughs> of the gold reserves of Haiti. Well, whatever it is, whoever it was, right? But Haiti need a kickstart, and that them can whoever take the money must send it back. Right? So hold on there, for, hold on there for me. Jeffrey, we, we have a video you see here. one of the things. That, hold on, Jeffrey. Mm. You see one of the things that me love with Caribbean leaders. We got to the chokehold situation. CARICOM advised people how to build back Haiti. When in a Jamaica, we had a we had an <coughs> install. We have an installing of mayor and and, and 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 deputy mayor of Kingston and St Andrew, which ended up in a stone throwing, bottle throwing, um, almost cheer throwing. Cho cheer throwing. But we want to solve Haiti because we don't have any clear plans for Haiti. Now, what is going to be Haiti's, apart from the oil that them have, who is going to go down there now from CARICOM to ensure that them can sell them oil, them can take care of the domestic um, situation? There is no clear plan, you know. It's only that the big boots are going to be on the ground and the Haitian people. Without going to the International Human Rights Court and say that French France has... Um, deprive Haiti of of millions or billions of dollars or trillions of trillions dollars. Uh, trillions of dollars. And those money are now needed for the redevelopment. It has to go into health, education, not just a military um, development. You know, not, we, we not just want to train police and soldiers. Well, you train them for, for go watch them one another again. The Haitian people need a break. Them need a break. Them need to be able to build back their economy, unlike their sister island, Dominican Republic, become a place where people can go and them can enjoy themselves and them can make money. But Haiti has natural resources that needs to be protected, and CARICOM should have put a far more forceful possession position to say. This is what needs to happen in Haiti. It seems like the only person right now in CARICOM that have any testosterone is Mia Motley, who has called this what it is. It's a bare face robbery of one of the 
most important Caribbean island that we all here need to feel sorry for them. Remember, Haitian overthrow their oppressors and they started one another. And the Western world has never, never. Well, there is also. Ah. also I, 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 I don't want to go into the whole of philosophical, philosophical arguments, right? Although that oh, sorry, I'm philosophical. Uh, no, man, you don't do that. that. I am the one that is but, philosophical. Well, you, you, yeah, but well, we are listening to you. No, but um, my... Gentlemen. Yeah, but no, have, no worry about have, my hold, one. Hold, talk hold, your hold, hold on for me. Hold well, on for me, gentlemen. Then, Let's have some order here. It, the, moderator, <coughs> the moderator must give each person two minutes or three minutes or four minutes. But we can't sit down here Thank listening you. to a whole heap of talk and, 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 and what we're going to do. The time but, went but, on. But, but, hold on here, Michael. Michael, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Sir, 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 Sir Williams. He's making some good points, you know. Because yeah, it's, philosoph but, it's all philo philosophical. But but, but yeah, everybody's entitled to, to their own opinion. Hold on there, Michael. What Luke is saying is making some good points. Because that, that leads me into this video now that we're going to watch. Because a news organization in the United States interview Guy Philippe. And Guy Philippe is saying that he wants to be the leader for Haiti. I agree in what he's saying that Haiti must decide its own destiny. Let's listen to what he's saying. A transitional government and elections which hasn't happened in eight years in the country and a new leader. In a one and only interview, a former senator and popular figure in Haiti says it was time for the prime minister to go and that only Haitians can decide the nation's future. No one else. The resignation of Ariel Henry creates a political power vacuum in Haiti. With gangs holding much of the power now, who next to lead the struggling nation is a mystery. I'm preaching a peaceful revolution. That's what I'm trying to do in Haiti. Guy Philippe, a former Haitian senator, ex-convict, and popular rebel leader, tells me in this one and only interview, the answer should come from within. Believe me, this time Haitians should decide who should govern Haiti. After all, Haiti is a sovereign country. Philippe spent seven years in a U.S. prison on drug and money laundering charges before being deported back to Haiti last year. We have to be, to be able to give hope to our people. Young people have no hope in Haiti. Monday night, in a hastily assembled news conference, Caribbean leaders said it had the workings of a new plan to stabilize Haiti. CARICOM's new plan, an interim prime minister, a seven-member presidential council from different groups in Haiti with two observers overseeing the daily operation of a new government, a transition to elections, and receiving a new multinational police force. Make a poll. As Haitians, you will see no one wanted. No one. Only those corrupted guys and some uh, people in the international community that don't understand Haiti. They don't understand us. They don't want to understand us. They never listen to us. They think they have the solution. Haitian people will keep on de making demonstrations, peaceful demonstrations in the streets saying, no, we don't want that. We're not going to accept that masquerade. No one is going to accept that. Not because we have a problem with CARICOM or, or the international community. Once again, no, we are not enemies. But they've been trying to impose us, those kind of corrupted people, for too long. Look where we are. My, 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 my. Mr. Nelson, you're, yeah. you're a security expert in all of this. What Guy Philippe just said, a former senator and a now a rebel leader, your views on that? You know, it's amazing that Mr. Philippe gets released early from prison. Hmm. He shows up not only in Haiti, but passed through Jamaica, collecting the weapons that he shipped down. Or somebody ah. shipped, shipped for him. Ah. Right? It's amazing. And that ah. he just moves in and may very well become the next strongman leader in Haiti. But you can't have that. The people of Haiti don't wish for that. So you would have a continuing problem over decades with him as a strongman leader. Remember what happened with Papa Doc, then Baby Doc, and Nampi and the rest of the colonels who led 
from the Haitian army. Nothing was stable, right? So you, this is the time to really work out a more stable plan to have the council to rule Haiti. And we discussed this at, in the U.S. quite a bit amongst the Haitian uh, diaspora. Have the council to rule with, with the um, a selection of a national leader, whether president or prime minister, right? On, and organize elections on the national and local levels. Now, when you can accomplish that, and the people have made their choices, then you can walk away, not entirely, but you can move to the side and let the Haitians run the country. I don't know what this guy is talking about, and I don't trust him, right? I have my doubts about his credibility. So let's see what the original plan is. Let's see, and keep in mind, when it comes to drug trafficking, human trafficking, and weapons trafficking across the Caribbean, Haiti is one of the largest transshipment points, right? If you think Jamaica is a transshipment point that's effective for the cartels, no, Haiti is effective for the cartels. So there's a lot of people that's hoping that what happens in Haiti will be business as usual once the, the foreign forces are there yeah. and they'll have a chance to quell the situation. Yeah. I don't believe a lot of people want that for that very reason. They don't want the situation under mm. control. And we have to do that first and foremost. Remember, 11 million people are there hoping that their lives will be organized and that the level of stress will be hit, taken down quite a few notches. Yes. Um, so, friends, this me. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to apologize to the NDM chairman before I say anything. You may consider it philosophical. But fact. <laughs> Haiti is the revolution that has never ended. From the moment the Haitian Revolution was said to have occurred, none of the first world countries as we currently know them were on board with its success. Forget the lip service. The international community in terms of first world countries could not then and cannot now <clears throat> afford for the Haitian revolution to be seen as a success. And everything that has gone on since then till now as we speak is towards that end. People who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. Now I'm about to become very unpopular in certain circumstances, but to hell with it. Haiti has a set of Oligarchs call that closely akin to our PSOJ, mm. who have no interest in certain things occurring in Haiti without their hands being on the wheel. Would it surprise you if I told you that there is a wharf, a harbor in Haiti that the government have no control over? I was told about that. And that is the source of weaponry finding its way into Haiti. You know of the situation. I think I may have winked you to it. Yes. Where a yacht came in, sailed past the HMS Cagway, docked at Morgan's Harbor, offloaded five cases of AR-15s with rounds that are blue tip ammo and took off again, and it was subsequently found off the coast of Old Harbor 
with nobody on board. Do you know who the yacht belong to? Guy Philippe. I don't talk. His, we became a transshipment point for his weapons to be sent into Haiti through this very same wharf. Now, liars figure, but figures don't lie. An average platoon in the army is approximately 30 men. Yes. Three platoons make a company. So you're talking about 90 men. Right. Multiply that and you can get a battalion. Where am I going? 4,000 criminals were <laughs> liberated. You tell me how much battalion that. And there are the means to arm them. You think it's accident? They must go knock on the door of the, the prison and say, I, I come to see my cousin. They did it's a calculated move. We, I learned one thing as an infantry officer. It is one thing to think you're taking a country. But if you want to hold the cities, guerrilla warfare, urban terrorist warfare will kill you. America discovered it the hard way in Vietnam. Other countries are discovering it that you can go in there. Take it is one thing. Keep it now. The other thing that most people have forgotten and probably yeah. never knew. Haiti once had an army. And the American government disbanded. it. But yes. Then who the hell you think those gangs on the street are? Those are ex-soldiers with tactics, training, and no weaponry. So, Finzi Smith, do you think it's a wise idea? I'm going to get Luke George Cook and, and um, Chairman to come on in now. Do you think it's a wise idea? And Mr. Nelson, do you think it's a wise idea for Jamaica to be sending their sons and daughters into arms way? No. You asked a straightforward question, I get a straightforward answer. No. We can put them in harm's way here to keep us safe from ourselves. But we can't do that. So we're going to deplete our already understaffed military and police to send them into Haiti. To what end? I don't see the United States putting any boots on the ground. No, don't, 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 don't put boots on the ground to secure the embassy. They didn't secure it, they cleared it out. Yeah, they're not they're sending some they're sending some some um some personnel today. To secure it now. They mean the building? Yes. But the building I mean much the building is Haitian. And unless them figure that secrets within the building are potentially, you know, in danger of being Leaked. liberated. Yes. No, all of a sudden, I don't know if anybody else here noticed. You saw this Mr. Barbecue. Mm-hmm. A former police officer with a checkered record, to put it mildly. And then all of a sudden, other people start to pop up. They claim it's a coalition. But when they think they have it, and they start to discuss who must lead, <laughs> that's when the civil war starts. Mm. Mm -hmm. I find it as a military trained individual, I find it fascinating that Indeed. one man with this ironic name can cause so much trouble and it's nothing one well-placed nine millimeter round can cure. <laughs> let, us, let us go over to chairman of the National Democrat Movement. Your views on that, sir? Well, I don't have any views on what Finley Smith said except the last point to make that a nine millimeter bullet can solve a lot of things right well who's going to fire that gun it must be based on what if you if anybody here have a better idea than what car what not um herb said about caricom make we know but i believe that the caricom idea is a good idea 
until you have a better idea. But here's the flaw. Sorry, sorry to cut you. Here's the flaw. Just don't cut me, man. Don't cut me. Who, don't cut me. Who wait. went choose the people? Wait. wait. Who wait. went choose the people? Wait. Wait to turn, man. I waited my turn, and her will wait in his turn, and Luke will wait in his turn. Wait your turn. I can leave if you want. No one runs me out of anywhere, sir. Well, well, gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. No, 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 no. Let's stop it. Yeah. Come on now. But we must wait, man. Everybody get, get them like two minutes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. I tell you, the major in the army, you're under discipline. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Listen, her the Caracom's idea is the best idea that I've heard so far. I don't hear any other idea. Guy Felipe was responsible for running out Aristide, right? Out of power. And he was the first elected person. I was in Haiti for that election, right? And I saw the people vote overwhelming for Steve, right? And Guy Philippe was one of those persons that undermined him. He go way back. He was a criminal. He was a drug dealer, right? <laughs> An runner. And he is backed by the cartels. <laughs> so I don't know how Finlay Smith don't know that. I just told you. All right. Okay, good. Well, I... I am dealing with too philosophical, I, Finley. I am too philosophical. With solutions, right? And her solution is the best one that I've heard. That is the Caracom solution. Yes. I can't deal with all if I feel it, feel it, uh, going back, back to 1900 and 1800. Right? But, 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 we but, but, have but, 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 one of the places that a couple million nations going to want to come if we make them come. But well, Mr. Chairman, stop them from come. But Mr. Chairman, listen to me. Right? My, my, my views, my views on the Jamaican government sitting at a table with CARICOM leaders and the Secretary of State is this. Jamaica said Jamaica was the first country that said that they will help by sending troops into Haiti. Jamaica have been returning the Haitian people, but yeah. yet they can take in 53 of the World Bank employees from Haiti. And Jamaica, hold on for me, sir. And orphans. And orphans. And said, orphans, yes. They tell they take 50. But I want to tell you something that you may not know, and nobody has known, as I said. On, aside from the CARICOM leaders, there were 65 Haitians living in Haiti. That was part of the Zoom. The Zoom was part of Zoom that participated into this CARICOM thing. 65 Haitian leaders, right, from, ha from Haiti who participated by Zoom as part of this. So it is not the, H it's not the CARICOM leaders alone that came up with that plan. 65 Haitians <laughs> from civil society and everywhere yes. else. But, but, but my, my, my thing is this. But my thing is this, Mr. Chairman no. and Fringe Smith, Mr. Nelson and Luke George Cook. We cannot be so <laughs> hypocritical in the sense of we sitting at the table talking about security for Haiti when our country is in crisis. That's you it. have Bruce Golden, a former prime minister. That you is. have you, hold on for me, sir. You, you you have the prime minister of Jamaica there, the minister of foreign affairs, and other Jamaican officials who are sitting in, 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 in that meeting. And our country is in crisis, and they're there talking about sending Jamaican sons and women to Haiti. No, that didn't come up in this CARICOM discussion. No, I know it didn't come up, but I'm saying they're being no, hypocritical. It didn't come up in this discussion. When when the thing broke, Honest made a point about this was more a, a gesture of goodwill. I want to put it down to that. Because there was, there was no soldier that was going to volunteer to go to Haiti. 
And he, and he said the grave is a volunteer. No soldier going to volunteer to go to Haiti. Right? So he I said, don't want to go into that argument. He said he he, he, he said he, he said it's a volunteer thing? Yes. He when he said that? He said that after. That after I what? I want to volunteer to go. <laughs> but that is not on the table now. No Jamaican soldiers or any other soldiers is on the table. Right? On the table is what Herb discussed. Right? No, no. No, no, Mr. Chairman. No, Mr. Chairman. When the Kenyans go, we are supposed to send some. There are three Caribbean islands that have been identified who will be sending soldiers alongside the Kenyans to be in Haiti. And that was what that was that was what was said. Jamaica and two other um, countries are supposed to send soldiers who will be fighting alongside with the Kenyan to bring um, some amount of stability back to Haiti. The truth of the matter is that CARICOM Haiti having an observer status should come up with a long-term plan. I am agreeing that with some of what CARICOM have said, but it has to be broadened to ensure that those same civil society groups in Haiti and mm -hmm. those other um, groups are brought to the table. And so you don't have despots making utterances as if they have become the paragon of, of Haiti because it sounds similar to Jamaica where we listen to the politician but not the people. So I'm agreeing with you, Mr. Chairman, not in a philosophical position, but in the way that we need yeah, to go yes. forward by putting people's power at the center of the discussion. But CARICOM should not be a deciding factor. It can make recommendations, but it, the, 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 the recommendation that must stand predominant must be the ones coming from the Haitian people who are that's going what, to put their... That's what the whole thing said, the Haitian people are going to... Going to um, call them um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, you know that we say a lot of things on the paper, but I don't say it go. Well, we will talk to the Vumvava and the Vumvavi and the Haitian people get left behind. I'm just saying that I'm hoping that it is going to be a transparency process. The Haitian people need to be liberated. They need to see prosperity happening inside of their country. I believe that we have to protect our borders, yes, from an overrun because we can't take care of the people that are here in Jamaica. But we also have to have humanitarian aid because a lot of children and women are being raped and are, are being killed in Haiti. So the, all of the Caribbean need to say what is the amount that they will be able to take. And once that amount of um, safety has been restored to Haiti, then we'll return those people. Mr. Nelson? You know, the, the, the best laid plans will often go awry when there is not sufficient confidence in the planning or when countries decide that they're going to undermine or deviate. Now, I have not seen in historical context the U.S. doing this type of step aside and let the Caribbean decide. So I think because every Caribbean country in CARICOM have a stake in this, that they'll come up with the right planning, right? And that the plan will be adjustable as we go along. The U.S. has sweetened the pot even more by saying that they will bring their grand total up to 300 million. There was 100 million before from state, 100 million from DOD. Well, State Department is going to throw another 100 million in the kitty. And then the UN is putting 100 million out there. So you have a grand total of 400 million. That has a, attracted Benin who now want to put their combat troops right in the mix. So what we in Jamaica and elsewhere feared that 
our troop would be our police would become combat troop. We don't have to worry anymore if the Benin deployment is a reality. That they will have the power to be go to go going on the offense. But we're hoping that the planning that was made originally, where they'll integrate the police in with the HNP, which is the International Police, and they'll have a plan to patrol and to contain the gangs within their various zones. Right? And that the Canada and the US will be responsible for close air support. That means covering you from the air while you're on the ground. So let's hope that this type of planning will be effective and that we don't have to worry about Haitians running for their borders and crossing over to anybody else's border. No. That, that, that's pretty much all we can hope and pray for. Herb, one of the things I wanted to ask you, um, I know that Russia has expressed an interest to be on the ground, and I know that the United States is pushing back against it. Um, is there a possibility that they may get involved, and what seems to be Russia's interest in Haiti? Well, you know, Russia's interest in the Caribbean, in Venezuela, and in Cuba. Now, to put their names in the, in the hat for Haiti when they have been so outlandish in their attacks in the, um, the Eastern Europe and the war that could be conducted against the Ukraine. Yeah, I, any other country should be able to push back and tell the Russians, look, we have enough. And we can deal with this situation. The Russians want to give money, right? If the oligarchs want to spend their money and and get oil, the oil reserves um, built up in in Haiti, then by all means do that. That will help a great deal, and that can alleviate the situation for underserved communities in Haiti. But you know, we don't want any uh, other political interests that can lead to divisiveness on the ground in Haiti. And that shouldn't happen. CARICOM, this is a CARICOM region. It's also an AU, African Union region, region six of the African Union, right? And so the African countries and the CARICOM countries and other countries of the Caribbean, I should add, who speak Creole, who might be Dutch, French, or Spanish, whatever flavor, they also have a stake in this because their borders too can be flooded if things go drastically wrong with this plan. So let's hope that all hands are on deck and that we just don't reject the Russians um, out of hand, that we can tell Russia, look, send your money, right? And send maybe your experts that can deal with some of the internal um, issues that plague Haiti, right? Mm. If they have the experts that can address those issues. Yes. We're going to switch gear. But before we switch gear, there is a video I need to play where the Kenyans has delayed deploying their troops into Haiti. And I'm, I'm pretty much sure Mr. Nelson is aware of this because they're saying that Haiti has no prime minister. Mm -hmm. So let us listen to what they're saying. Well, let me just correct you. It is, the prime minister has not resigned enough. He's still the prime minister. He will resign when the when the council yes is up is put in place yeah and they yes. will and they will select the prime minister. But the okay. prime minister has not resigned. 
yet. Okay. Yes, they haven't resigned yet. But the Kenyans, the Kenyans are, have delayed deploying police officers into Haiti. Let's listen to this. You should add that they're asking for advance payment to Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And they asked for advance payment. Let's let's listen to what um this news is saying. Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, Kenya's president reaffirms his country's controversial commitment to send a thousand police officers to tackle gangs' stranglehold in Haiti. This comes despite an acknowledgement that there will have to be a delay following the Caribbean premier's resignation. Also, Rwanda upholds an election ban on opposition leader and government critic Victoire Ingabire. The fierce opponent of President Kagame spent eight years in prison before receiving a pardon in 2018, but now cannot run in the July polls. And more kidnappings, 166,000 euros worth in ransom cash. But first, Kenya's president, William Ruto, has insisted that his country will still eventually lead a UN-backed multinational police force to help rein in rampant <coughs> gang violence in the Caribbean nation of Haiti. The commitment is despite the delay of the deployment following the resignation of the Haitian prime minister this week. Kenya later acknowledged that Ariel Henry's resignation altered the situation on the ground as there's no holding government to work with the mission just yet. Our Canadian correspondent, Olivia Bizo tells us more. It's the latest chapter in the roller coaster saga. Kenya has said it will not send its security force to Haiti until a new government has been formed. Kenya's president, William Ruto, had initially made a deal to send a thousand police officers to the Caribbean nation to help tackle violence over there. But that deal was made with Haiti's prime minister, Ariel Henry, who on Monday said he would resign. Earlier today, we spoke to an expert who said that the mission will still go ahead, but just later than expected. That was an agreement between, you know, states as opposed to individuals. So we expect that uh, the deployment will proceed at some point. But to expect a transition first before deployment, I think is going to be a, a wishful thought, in part because the circumstances on the ground are not even uh, uh, good enough to allow for a peaceful transition. And that is why uh, some kind of a multinational force that is neutral is going to be needed. So when did this whole idea of sending Kenyan police officers to the other side of the world, to Haiti, to help tackle gang violence and insecurity over there begin? Well, Haiti's government appealed for international support two years ago. And then in July last year, Kenya's president, William Ruto, offered his support by sending a thousand Kenyan police officers to the Caribbean country. And that offer was approved by the UN Security Council a few months later in October. But the mission has been hugely criticized by a wide number of Kenyans, by the opposition and by human rights groups. Bizo there for us. Now, Rwandan opposition fi figure, Victor Ingebe. There you have it. I asked a question earlier, and I'd like an opportunity to have it answered. What's the question? Go ahead. This council that will eventually have the power to appoint a president or a prime minister. Who's choosing this council? Hmm. The 65 Haitians that were part of the Zoom meeting. You mean the private sector organization of Haiti? No, it's a wide cross section of people there. I, I don't believe in a wide cross section, Dara Trap. Well, I, know of, I know factually of well, manufacturers and what you call Vumva Vuvi. Vumva Vi and Vumva Vi. Who keep a stranglehold on the economy as it is, who are now in a position to put forward their agenda. Well, what's your agenda? My agenda? Yes. My agenda is if the Haitian people are to be are to choose, let them choose. Give them an opportunity to choose. Not well, a set it, of people who have appointed well, them. Well, they need, they need to have a structure for them to put in an election. That's what the man is going to do. But there is already a structure in Haiti when they have had elections before. What no, all that is happening is that they are choosing people. 
who says that these people that are going to be chosen have the support of the majority of the 11 million Haitians? Sure. Um, that's the argument that still go nowhere. Why that, you say that, Mr. Chairman? Be, be, because the, 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 people, the Haitian community in South Florida keep on saying that the Haitian people has to make a decision. But for that's who, the, who you think the 65 people that were in Haiti was doing? So the 65 <coughs> people outride the 11 million inhabitants of Haiti? Well, you can get 11 million on, on, in a Zoom meeting. I tell you what. Herb, it's really been nice. No, 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 no. You're not going anywhere, you know? Because as far as I'm concerned, the Haitian revolution never ended and it okay. is in Where the, that? the Where that our country interest that it does not successfully do so. Okay, we are that already, so. No, no, no. Come on, Mr. Chairman. What is going on with you tonight? Why are you acting this way? No, but how are you going to get 11 million people? To enter in a Zoom meeting to decide. But, 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 but Mr. Chairman. A Zoom meeting. But, Mr. Chairman, how is it that those people you spoke about, they're former Haitian politicians who yes. have raped the economy of Haiti, yes. who continue so to who you want? Who you want in the meeting? You want um, Guy Philippe and, and, um, and Baba? No, no, and, I'm not saying that. I am not saying that, sir. So, who you want in the meeting? Who does Major want to Do you meet? know of anyone else in Haiti that has Haiti's interest at heart without looking to fill their pockets? We don't know. We don't know. Well, you don't know till you ask. Till you investigate. Yeah, well, well, you, you know, look, we, 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 can, we can decide that in this discussion. So, right? let's leave Haiti to Haiti. That okay. Too. That's what Let I us said. switch here now. Leave it to Haiti. Yes. They <laughs> fought hard and long again. for the independence. Let us leave them to their independence. What they do with it is up to them, not us. I agree. I and agree. I, that's true. And, and, and I don't want them on our shores. That Man. is our interest. We now must protect ourselves from the influx of what's going on over there. Right. And if anybody who has been looking in the sky recently, who That's see Chinooks right. running through the air, what do you think they're doing? Giving tourist tours? Mm. Those are troop carrying helicopters. And let me let you into something you may not be aware of. The prison breaks were engineered using high-tech stuff, including drones. All right, okay. What kind of funding allows them to do that? Have you looked at the weapons they're carrying? Yes, sir. The funding come from the cartel. From the where? The cartels. The, the, from Guy Philippe and then people have a deal with cartels. So, okay. How, how you know the funding? How you know the funding? The funding not come from certain powerful countries. Well. Our part, our funding we don't part know. We do, that too, that too. Our, 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 our so from, the, from the Haitian oligarchs. I agree with Major. Leave Haiti. Yes. Leave Haiti. Concentrate on Jamaica, where That's we need right. to raise our children That's and right. grandchildren, right. and That's they right. don't speak French. That's right. So, gentlemen, on Jamaica. Are you aware that J Jamaica has some? Political parties, the NDM, the, the 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 UIC, the People's, the Marcus Garvey People's Movement, and all sort of movement. Now, we have the chairman of the National Democratic Movement here with us, Michael Williams. Three political parties is being united in Jamaica. Mister, Mister, Mister Williams, you want to give us some more um, we, the, information the, on that? The NDM. Yes. From 1995, I'd come up with some proposals for constitutional reform in Jamaica. And up to now, we have not had any real constitutional reform. And what the present government, in collaboration with the opposition, has decided was 
the only reform that they are going to do is to move the Republic, the Jamaica Republic, by removing the King of England and putting in a non elected president. Hmm. I don't agree with that. And that non elected person would just do the same thing that the governor general was doing. And does that, that, that make any sense, Mr. 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 Chairman? No, it don't make any sense. The trick so and trick. We have decided the NDM and three other political, small political parties. You and just, the names are the names of them are who? You just name them. The you up Jamaica is a new party that has been started. Yes. Marcus Garvey Party and two other parties. Right? We have all what, are, what are the two other parties' name? I don't recall. You can't recall. Okay, go ahead. Don't recall. I personally am not part of this alliance, but I support it. So is, is, is the NDM a part of the, of the alliance? The, the NDM is a part of it. But aren't but, you the chairman of the NDM, sir? Yes, but I'm chairman of the NDM. I am not part of the alliance structure. I support it, but I'm not part of the structure of the alliance. The alliance is just to promote constitutional reform across the country. And it, one of the first things that we are saying is that the people of Jamaica, on a direct ballot, ballot, must elect the president or the prime minister. The second thing we are saying is that the, on another ballot, they must elect their member of parliament. And the third thing that we are saying is that councillors must be elected separately when council when when their their election their time come they must also live in them division and the, yes. the person who is elected as the mp must live in his constituency yes right and we are saying fixed date for elections both local and general those are the four main things but they what are what about uh, term limits pardon me term what limit. about term limits Term limits is here already. Oh, okay. oh, term limit for the president. We are saying that each prime minister must have two terms, two five-year terms. Right? But MPs can have up to four terms. But none of them must be a minister. But none of them will be a minister if they choose to become an MP. Ministers of government must be hired that, so they that, can be fired. That, that's right. That's right. That's right. So what about the Attorney General? I firmly believe that the Attorney General of Jamaica should never be appointed. Well, the, the Attorney General, we have discussed with the Alliance, the Attorney General, but the Attorney yes. General is the, is the lawyer for the government. Right? So, whether he is appointed or not, it don't matter. He is a lawyer for the government. He already has a conflict of interest. Well, he is a lawyer for the government. Yeah. So, yeah, we do anything to protect who the government is. What's the conflict of interest? He's going to do anything he can to protect the government. All right. Well, that's fine. But they are Which they not necessarily run that's... in keeping with the, the citizens' needs and rights. No, that do have nothing to do with the citizens' needs and rights. People, civil society will look after the citizens' needs and rights. And we're going to have recall. We're going to have recall for prime for for um. For hold, hold, hold on, Mister 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 Chairman. Hold on a minute for me. Remember what you're going to say. You're saying that the Attorney General should be appointed because they're going to protect the government. They are the they are the lawyers for the government. Right. So why is they it? Won't, they won't be lawyers for the members of parliament. The members of parliament, remember, you know, the members of parliament are going to be the watchdog for the people. 
because they are not going to be part of the government structure. As, oh. it, as it is now. Okay. It's called true representational politics. That, that's what we're looking for. And we don't want a prime minister who is not, who want only one person to be paid as prime minister. What they are proposing now is that the, the president would be appointed also and he will be enjoying a $35 million salary for, the, for be a ceremonial president. We don't want that. Right? In addition to that, I, from the NDM, because I'm not a part of the alliance structure, but I'll be going out to talk about early childhood education. I just sent a little clip to the present member of parliament. My member of parliament is Flavor Williams, and she's also the Minister of Education. And I sent her like a three minute clip of what's going on in Finland. Finland has the highest educational standard, higher than any other country in the world. Right? Mm -hmm. And they have been so successful with their educational system that it needs to be looked at. And they start their education at two and a half. We start our education at five and a half. Our formal education system begins at five and a half. Right? No wonder we have so much illiterates. What somebody said recently, the lump in, 29% of the people voted in the last election. The lump in is selected the government. Because all the educated people stay home. But, but I, Mr. Williams, I, but, but, I, but, but, I, Mr. Williams, I, I vote in, but it, so few of us that voted. But, right? but Mr. Williams, a lot of a lot of the people of the upper Saint Andrew and um, never vote, and and, and hope pastors and all those people always stay home, sir. Them don't vote. Them don't. Them vote. always stay home. Well, well. Uh, because they have opted out of the system because the system not working for them. No, oh. I, I wouldn't say that. I, I think I think they opted out of the system because they know the the lower grass Jamaicans will, will, will continue putting in these dire tribes. Well, that's no. right. Because they, they they only have the GLP and the NP to select from, <coughs> and they they have, they have turned their back on the GLP and the PNP. But what, what, what I don't understand, and I don't want Luke George to come in here. What I don't understand is this, Mr. Mr. Chairman. A local government election just happened. And the people of Jamaica and the Dash would love to see that the NDM put in somebody in there. But nobody was in there, sir. So how can they trust the NDM? Well, we 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 didn't we didn't contest the local government elections for two reasons. We we have not properly sold our proposal to the people of Jamaica yet. We are going to sell it now. And we are going to insist on fixed date for elections. So elections don't come as a shot in the dark as it comes now. When the Prime Minister feels to call it, him call it. Both local and general elections. That is something that we need to be able to plan and look forward to. Hmm. Mr. Cook? Um, look, um, Michael just said that the upper cross of Jamaica don't vote, but they benefit from the voting one way or the other. Um, so they have a keen interest in it. What I will agree with Michael with, that there must be more public education that goes into voting and therefore allowing people at the local level to start bringing solution to the problems that they're experiencing. Certainly the proposal that Michael is pushing would have answered 
what happened in Negril because then the issue of Negril, like so many other communities, must be addressed by its people. They must be able to prioritize what are their their basic, medium, and long term needs for growth and development. Um, I'm fully in support of the reform of the education system. But if what Michael is also suggesting, with the level of understanding that more educated people have, what would prevent them from going out to vote if they recognize that elections have consequences and therefore not to participate is going to allow for the ramping shop that we currently have in the country? Um, fix election dates, term limits for MPs, for councillors, with job description, and as my good friend said, the major, we must hire people so that we have the ability to fire them, that nobody will feel if that they can become like in stagnant waters that hold back the progress of the Jamaican people. Um, if this is what the coalition is proposing, I believe that they will get some traction, um, but it goes a step further. Are we going to therefore then prioritize food security for the first um, 10 years? Are we going to look at developing the human capital for the next 10 years? And then we're going to look at those infrastructure and IT needs that we can compete in this <laughs> larger economy of the world. What is it that Jamaica has, Michael Williams? that we can sell apart from the idea that tourism is our main foreign earner. $1.3 trillion was outlined in the budget. That's not a country that is poor. How is that 1.3 going to meet the challenges of the people that are suffering? You're talking about people leaving Haiti by both Jeffrey Tavares, but have we, in this discussion, also said Jamaicans would have been leaving in droves if the US border was still open? What is going to prevent more of us from not leaving? Who and what is going to run this country and to put the needs of the people above the gain of those who put up themselves for election. And one of the things that is critical to that, um, Jeffrey, are we going to reform how the army and the police force now engage a citizen to build back trust into those institutions of government so that they can bring law and order? We won't see a, a situation like Haiti arising. Um, again, when you look at the video, um in downtown for the surrounding of the mayor and the members of the municipality um and you see it turn into a chaotic situation where bottles are hurled and you see men in uniform but they could not even quell that situation it it, it begs to ask are we really prepared if jamaicans tomorrow take to the street and the, um, to destroy both property and, and certainly to turn the guns at each other because mm -hmm. there is still a rift between those who support one of the political sides that you never even see a countryman as a countryman and you could go out there and enjoy uh, the freedom to have the installation of members of the municipality without it turning into a chaos. Um, Jamaica is at a boiling point. There's a lot of things that people are frustrated with. They're fed up with, they hear 1.3 trillion, but they don't know when the Jamaican people will have a say in their democracy. Yeah. Certainly, this whole talk of independent reform and constitution yeah. reform, sorry, constitution reform is being done largely without the participation of the ordinary people who went into a local mm -hmm. government not fully understanding what the municipalities are supposed to be doing. We yeah. have large amount of garbage uncollected. We have roads that people drive on that are in poor condition. We have people having to now protest for water, something as fundamental as water. And this is why it takes every Jamaican um, 
to get involved in ensuring that those basic fundamental rights um, right. are protected. And if you can't get those people who are currently elected to deliver on these promises, then the people need to see, make sure that the next time they go to the poll, their vote counts yeah. for something more than just being affiliated with one of the two two party i'm right. agree with michael on some things and I, and i hope that i am not philosophical in agreeing <laughs> with him and i'm not taking more than my two minutes yes um let us go to finji smith we're gonna we're gonna take some calls and we'll wrap up so smith you know, you know what is going on with, with the, 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 these three political parties join the alliance no one but, but what i don't understand though the chairman of the party said he's not a part of he's not an affiliated um with, with the alliance. But I'm not going good there. I find I it that, no, no, I I'm going that's where it is. No, no, I, hold on there. Hold on, hold on there. I'm gonna go there. The chairman of the party is here tonight of the National Democratic Movement. And he's telling the Jamaican people that three political parties in Jamaica, third parties in Jamaica, came together. To form an alliance, and he's a chairman for the for the National Democratic Movement, and he's at the part of the alliance. No, I find it very very odd. No, the alliance, the president of the NDM is yes. the chairman of the alliance. The vice president of the NDM is part of the alliance, and the general secretary for the NDM is part of the alliance. Right? Yes. I remain as chairman. They only wanted three people. From each party to be part of the alliance. I don't need to be part of the alliance. I will go on the road and do the talking to the people, right? As part of NDM. I'm still the NDM chairman and I still support the alliance, but the alliance have the president there, <coughs> it has the general secretary there, and it has a vice president there. Hmm. I don't treat people that need it. Okay, understood. Okay. Sir Smith? Yes, sir. Your views um, on the alliance at the, the form? Another I have, view, another thing? I, I have nothing <laughs> further to say on that subject. <laughs> what I will point out, you know, this old ditty that they used to say, the neck bone connected to the shoulder bone and what connected to the elbow bone. We have failed to understand the connections and their consequences. Our judicial and justice system is in shambles. You know why? Do you know where the voters list come from? People who register. You know where the jury list come from? The voters list. And a lot of what is happening in the jurist situation is the people who should not really be involved because of their lack of ability to absorb what is happening there. So you can go to somewhere and a jury retire for 20 minutes and come back with a guilty verdict. And when you do the appeal, you discover that money percent. So nobody now has no faith in the jury system. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's the same type of thing that if you take your voting seriously and you take being a jurist, jurist seriously, justice will be served. Well, I have been right a jurist. Huh? I have no been what? a jurist and I go and vote. Did you vote for <laughs> Major? Oh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> That's two of us. That's two of us. Let me tell you, yes. I, 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 I from my, my two parents, God bless their beautiful souls, told me that if you don't take a stance as to what is happening in your country, you know how to talk. I agree with that. I, 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 I have a call. I also yeah. heard from my beautiful mother. A country gets the government it deserves. Yes. You should look at that. Yes. I, I, I have a call in line here. The Prime Minister of Jamaica made a statement 
in, in Clarkstone that he's going to make Clarkstone Silicon Valley around in the city. Carla, welcome to the program. Welcome, Jeffrey and Fanny. Big up to each other, friend. Doctor yes. Herbie, I watch you know. Big up yourself, Luke George. Big up. I mean, like what I say. Watch me now. As an ordinary Jamaican, when them I tell you about uh, constitution reform, them own to me. Them only try to change the constitution for themselves. <laughs> Nobody has changed the constitution for the majority, the masses of the people. And what Mr. Williams is portraying is just just like Mr. Andrew and his ignorant ignorance. Everybody are talking about change this, change that. You know what? You know what we need for change. We need for change the constitution from top take people name off a voters list. We got on jury. Train people to become jury. Right? Because liar in a court house are get peer, judge are get peer, clerk a court are get peer, jury are get stipend. Them the days they done. Those are the things we try to change. The next thing we have to try to change again, pick me a real uniform go school. All people need is a jeans bottom and a top. Uniform don't make you learn. Those are the things. School have take uniform, PE gear, Hepolet, and you have to pay one bag of money to hit. Pick me up for this and for weird that. Those are the things that we talk about. I right now, and then I talk about court and the Privy Council. If the, if they ever make the mistake and come out of the Privy Council, Jamaican people's dead, dead and rotten in, in the dungeon where they have done me. Because all of the boom of our people, them. When them do things, for them things sweep on the carpet, man bed in a Patrick Daly house, and when Patrick get bed rest, with Jamaican ordinary man, we could be suspect and no guardian. Eh? Then why Chuck said, when the police come through Royal Reed, said police, them how to harder. Then run at the man house like a Nicodemus in the night. Other people in the house are sleeping and police running in there. And them no come out concert say that. Then right Chuck say in uh in uh put out the, the sex registry act. So then the thing we be talk about, we don't want a president now nah, or this now nah, or that. Jimmy can already for that. Fix the thing properly and make it be basic for all of we. If me kill, make me go to prison. You hope that's a kill, go to prison too. Them that the thing we talk about, talk about president. And all of the big people up at top, them now voting. You know? And them get the benefit, them get the waiver. When they go and walk, they go clear them barrel, they get it free. When they go to buy a vehicle, they get it free. These are the things we try to change. These are the things we make people confused. The next thing again, they say, they make you an investor. Yes, you're coming with investor. The manager them are the investor uncle. The investor wife, the investor this, the poor Jamaican people only get the dirty part I work. I feel like I'm not me hard this part, I feel like I'm not me. And then they will change. The next thing, Nigel Clark comes and say, he might change, he might change, he raise threshold from 1.5 to 1.7. Looking like good, only benefit just a few. The majority of people are work thirteen thousand dollar per week, thirteen by by fifty two. See what you get, and when you get the thirteen thousand tax more time. So check thirteen by fifty two week in no, a year. Come on, that, I have a fat night at twenty five week. Uno, come on, man, Mister Williams, you say you come with a party NDM. I me ban come here, but this NDM National Democratic also movement. Yeah. Uno, if you know you. Really, really said who love Jamaica and Jamaicans. The NDM is around long time. So a full time for not put up some put up some people come with an idea. But if you don't come with the idea when you are talking, you're not working. And right now, to we are by Jamaica, 
if one or two men and women we have a big and start the war, it will go worse and yet it can be tired of the compression. We don't want nobody to come spoon feed me. Like when we work, we see where we work for. We don't take a municipal people, a mash up people style, and nobody in the upper, upper land to not talk about that. If a, if a person co commit a crime, you know, commit a crime against a policeman per se, he commit against the state, and police are take up man, and box them, kick them, do them kick, soldier, kick woman, nine billion, and do everything. And nobody up at the Vimpa and Vumpa V, not a that. So why does there be constitution if you change? People are trying to change the constitution if you brainwash people. I tell them about mm -hmm. president. Jamaica don't want the president. We tell them, Jamaica want when we go off to go work, you train up the young people and give them, give them a vision. Give them hope in their own country. So, so that they can go to school here, come here and serve back. You don't even want to go But the first five years of employment are to serve your country. Be patriotic. That what, and that will grow up on. We want to be a soldier, we want to be a nurse, we want to be a doctor, but, that, but there is no future. That is the constitution for change. We don't want to. No, but then the, the Rocky Maid, Pepper Lanty, Pepper Lanty, sit down there in my name. Hold on, hold on. But then the... Hold on, he is ambassador of him. Um, when I call it again, look, put it up and see. I can't put it up, Peter. I, I, I call it ambassador. All them the foolish is there. And the next constitution of the change, the, the Jamaica police constabulary force yeah. is a body by itself. It's supposed to be independent. So if one commissioner retire or resign, leave the police a pick from among themselves. Prime Minister opposition, no, we have no talk in this up. Let the rank and file man them. Put up the, the deputy the way you have. Let the rank and file people vote and pick who they want because they will not with them. You know, say the, 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 the prime minister at the last year. Then the thing for change. The, pick, the rank and file pick who they want and present him. And the prime minister endorse him and say, sir and ma'am, you will be successful. You are picked by your fellow person who you serve. And this is that and that is this. You know, come to me say, Prime Minister, if you pick who you want, just if you come up in his slackness then. See, fifth bill there. Fifth bill is a man where the world Jamaica used to look for. Now he, he come like a butt against hot bread. Just melt away. You know, if you, you, you try to look bad, if you know, you come up in a rank, come up in a rank. And people look up to you and because of some little, some, some a blood and greed and, and politically aligned. Your name does vanish, eh? You don't need a fixed bill again. You need a fixed bill, you know, F I X. Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore dead. Nobody don't know when dead. The last place they say go a minister of justice, and they go find it, and they go find a rope, hang himself down there. So, oh, if you look at this thing, you know, you make a rich as a space where a peer criminal we have in a parliament. Be a criminal. The Prime Minister come out and say, Imago, in my first hundred years, you get 5,000 acre and done. Why do you then say that they put out a manifesto? Election run, all now we can't see no manifesto. All now Jamaica don't know who win the local government. Gross, gracious God, you know, blind. What more? Of my 50 years of life, I do me a election run. Me, me hear when election run, you hear who win and who win. You never hear about this. Well, Port Moore um, is a municipality by itself from 2003. So, St. Catherine and Port Moore, I see him. Almost everybody sit down and watch everything happen and not talk to it. So when I not going tell me about, if me ever did not come here, I never going tell me about Nagano, and I tell him so, see, you see? <laughs> At 15, municipality in Jamaica, 14 parish, 
plus uh plus what more make 15. I mean, I know I brought down to 13. Those are the odd things we never talk about. We're picking them a rip. Hold on to me, Carla. Is it 15, um, um, Michael Williams? Well, King, King and St. Andrews counts it as one. Yes. Well, right. I'm 14 then. Right. Money, what more money is it, Paddy? 14 is a new one. Farm by the people. But poor more than that. But then we clear the one over here in 2003. And it passed in my parliament. But poor more is not a parish. Poor more is not a parish. Yes. So the parish is still St. Catherine. So tell me something, Mr. Williams. When the, the late mayor for Portmore died, wasn't there something in right. place for Portmore to vote for the, the for their people by themselves? Yes, yes, the people vote for the mayor. The people vote right. for the mayor. But the but, mayor so but the Portmore is a municipality, but it is not a parish. Oh. So when Portmore become a parish, it will be standing on its own. But right now, Portmore is part of St. Catherine. So the world Mr. is the house. Yes, Don't... Mr. Williams. Yes, Portmore is part of St. Catherine. But where the municipality comes in, 2003, go look, it passed in Parliament. Yes, of course. And from, two, and from 2003, come up to now, election run over and over. So why this election, you know, this man has come with the iron fist. I can't change your pay. We're well, not changing nothing. I'm not changing nothing. But but Mr. Williams, Mr. Oh. Williams, Mr. Williams, hold on, hold for me, Carla. Mr. Williams, the last government election, you, you didn't hear so much shibang around going on like we're hearing now. The last general election, local government election. The last local government election was seven years ago. Right, seven but you, and a half you, years ago. Right, but you never hear so much shibang around going on like we're hearing now. It. What 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 is Bangarang? A lot of Jamaicans, Mr. Williams, do not know who truly won the election. Well, <laughs> if you count, you're going to count by parish. Well, on the Jeffrey, yes, Mr. Williams, Carlos Peard has Peard. You oh, is oh. an elderly man. You've been here a long time. In all your years of Jamaica, from 1944 and the adult human suffrage, have you ever heard an election in a Jamaica run with a result like this? No. Well, so no. why people like you, but, the private sector, the point and I'm other making. persons who are <laughs> people, not all people, right. you want to go by parish? Call back election over. This you is want foolishness. To, you want this to go by party. You want right. to know who won the we election. We said we live in a democratic hold country. I'll tell you Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on for me, Carla. Let, let, let me say what I was respond to you. If you go by parish, starting with St. Saint, Saint, Saint Thomas, we we'll go around the island from St. Thomas. The JP won St. Thomas. So count that. Portland, the JP won Portland. St. Mary, the PNP won St. Mary. St. Anne, the JLP won St. Anne. Trelawney, the JLP won St. Trelawney. St. James, the JLP won St. James. Hanover, the PNP won. Westmoreland, the PNP won. Manchester, the PNP won. St. Elizabeth, the JLP won. Um, Clarendon, the JLP won. St. Catherine, the PNP won. Kingston and St. Andrew is a draw. What? Count up that now. Look here. Yes, me hear what you say. But if St. Catherine, if the PNP win St. Catherine, I'll win in a municipal part. Because all of you have about the parish you now. When Jazzy was alive, may God rest his soul, and when in 2003, when they go in a parliament and say we have voted with me, 
So I tell you about the parishes now. We are about Port Moore is the biggest uh, all this scheme in the Caribbean. Yes, and I the agree. And the biggest they want them own. And the government at the day, they table it in the parliament and pass it. So I'm going to say, why Port Moore and St. Patrick to let the leadership to be one? That is unfair to the Jamaican people. But what is unfair? unfair. The, the, the St. Catherine. You know right. Look here, Miss Lady. Yes. St. Catherine will have its own mayor. That is a PNP person will become the mayor of St. Catherine. And, and a PNP person will become mayor. the mayor that of the So somebody has to go in that parliament, go for the paper there. And reverse it because right. it's passed in a parliament. So obviously, in a parliament, we, we have a, a set of baboons. That's why they call a set of baboon parliament. Okay, you, understand. you can't tell me if my little son and my grand pitney come home and I do some schoolwork about here, this and that, and me as an elder, as in grandmother. Can I explain to him? Be dead, dead, dead. So how are we turn? How are we done turn food, food? Teach and learn, can learn, teach me. Call it, let me ask you a question. Parents can help them. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. I may, I may, I may, I may drift away from the, the, the local government election, but let me ask this question. It came up to me. The Minister of Finance, and I'm going to ask Finjie Smith <laughs> and Luke George Cook and Sir Nelson and uh, Mr. Chairman to come into this one. The Minister of Finance said that they're going to give some money to table the FinSAC report. It must come out. All right? Yeah. <laughs> the FinSAC report must come out. Let me tell us Hold on, hold on for me, Carla. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. The Prime Minister's wife, who is the chairman, who is the speaker of the House, is sitting on a yes. report that was sent to her. Until now, she haven't tabled those two reports. So the question I want to right. ask now, is there some political propaganda, some political thing going on in the parliament? Yes, I agree that the FinSec report must be tabled and must, become, it must come out. I agree. The report must be shown to the Jamaican people. The Jamaican people have a right. The Jamaican people have a right, Madam Speaker. For you to get up off of your posterior, ma'am, and table those two reports was sent to the Parliament of Jamaica. We need to know why in a table, Mr. Ma Ma Madam Speaker. So I find uh, it, I find yes, it very you. ironic <laughs> that the Minister of Finance is going to say that they're going to have money just for the FinTech report to come out. Mr. 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 Right. Chairman, your views on that. Hold on for me, caller. Your views on that, Mr. Chairman. Well. As far as the FinTech report is concerned, it shall, should have come out long time. Yes. Long, long time. It is long overdue. Right? It should have come out three or four years ago or five years ago. Right? As far as the two things in Parliament, yes, the Speaker of the House is playing politics because she has read the two documents and she knows that it is hurtful to the JLP because it's going to show that where the corruption is. That's my take on the both, uh, both, both subjects. Finjie Smith? Uh, which question are you asking me? Finjie Smith? Right. Anything? Yes, uh, call up. All right, Mr. Smith. Call up. No, anything. Don't, don't move, call up. Don't move. Hold on. Anything that affects the citizenry in terms of what may have gone on behind their backs or untoward, is to be released. If you hide it, that's double trouble in terms of corruption. Corruption that it happened, and corruption that you hide it. Mm -hmm. In terms of the recent concealment, and I use my terms advisedly, yes. of the six. All it has done, it hasn't really done any good to the Labour Party. What it has done is made most people sit down and say, is it really that bad that you can't say something about it? Is it really that bad that you can't 
make us judge for ourselves. Put it out there. Mm -hmm. Is it something that may look away what you can explain it? Obviously, it can't be explained, so it is being concealed. It brings me to the time when an attempt was made to conceal um, cabinet's decisions for 75 years. Remember that? 60, mm -hmm. 60. 60. Might as well be 75 for you and that. <laughs> Where are you hiding? No. Yes. My thing is very, very simple. I, I believe that Jamaica has a problem. We look for complex solutions to simple problems. We seem to have forgotten the terminology conflict of interest. The chairman of the NDM cannot sit in judgment of an internal matter if it involves his son. I agree. Him can't come up with a new clause. Oh, well, it doesn't say anything about it here, so I will. Common decency, which doesn't be so common anymore, dictates so that he must recuse himself. So what are you saying? That maybe the speaker should, should accuse herself then? Because maybe, I, her I, name I on the list too. Huh? Because maybe her name on the list too. I never said I bow to the chairman's superior knowledge on the I subject. I said maybe. Let me say it again. Maybe her name is that's on the not, list. That's a philosophical position, dear. <laughs> <laughs> that's not philosophical at is, all. What happens if and when it finally surfaces like a vampire rising from its grave and her name is on it? Where does it put her? Everything she does now is open to question. Rushing down to the counting center at the EOJ. You've been in the politics business longer than I have, Chairman. Is that correct? No, but okay. I'm going to tell you something. She would not last the, the, the entire seat if she wasn't high handed and changed the original counselor that was there. Ah, ah. Mm. Now, let me explain to you my little knowledge as to what the big deal is. Building committee. Is that what you call it? That Where you get your approvals? Yes. Everybody, I take me a lock now, you know. Because <laughs> I'm waiting for the audit of the building committee. Who doing the audit? I don't know, but I hear the mayor who's say who's that it? It is being done. Ah, but if it's not, it is an indictment on the other side that said them no control the council. Well, we could see. Hold on there for me. I'm the caller still online. Caller, are you still there with us? Yes, man. Tell me about it. Listen <laughs> now. <laughs> All of you, man, on the line. Mm -hmm. Is probably probably made Jeffrey a one age and Luke must be a smaller brother, right? Herb Jamaican, left your girlfriend and whatever. It's a fancy, fancy. It's a man on the meter, you know. He's mm -hmm. a well experienced man and he live at Jamaica. I know a one. The mm -hmm. NDM, Mr. Williams, I said, thing. Listen, if we look back then, comparing to, to now with this government. Everything in a Jamaica going on next side. The, the, the illicit, the, the IC, the commissioner, I went in Cali, integrity commissioner, mm -hmm. says six person in a parliament where, where we investigate the illicit, enrichment. illicit whatever, enrichment. The prime minister, which is the chief servant of the country, the pre RIME prime minister, who is the minister of defense, cannot uh, uh, put in or get the money. No, and nobody, if back then the churches would have come out and lick out. Caller, I, I, call call I keep on telling, and I will not apologize for what I'm going to say. 
the Jamaica umbrella of churches, the Jamaica Council of Churches, a bunch of hypocrites and sell out. Go ahead. No. How comes you, which is not with civil democratic country? Yes. Me take time I read up, read up now, I may go in a city. I may use my big phone and internet and learn myself. Ever happen like this? Which other which other Caribbean country this ever happen? Which other Caribbean country them are sitting happen? And and people that are about 80 and barbecue and this Jamaica link with Philippe, our name cast Philippe won't come at Jamaica and let's okay. come from America, come at Jamaica, go back at you, back at 80. As big as mania, as Luke, big mania, no outing. As what Luke George barbecue. Said. Hold on if I may call as, as what Luke George could have said. In which modern democracy can this happen? I never said so. I said dog has sweat but long hair I cover it. <laughs> barbecue. The man when I call barbecue. He <laughs> said one thing when, when we take home. He said, ah, everybody has go out. Oh, you cannot come. Me can't come at anyone out in the yard come tell you no Philip. If there's a something happening going on the yard, who don't must have the first say and give the people my eighty. They choose. But something that yet where everybody are run down. And then I run down to take care of the people. Them. That is it. That is it. Mr. Andrew is having the backyard. We want to clean up. And you left God in a yet. People left people come on and pick me, rush by sea water, come here. And 24 hours to send them back. But you still want to go in there, go in there, boy, you're going there. What destabilize? Destabilize what? And you take half and come here. Look at them with a pick them where we have borrowed a, a white car glass. Look at the pick them in a state where we are get abused. Why you not fix them there? But because of money. I mean, I tell you, no nickel labor right where we go vote for labor right. <laughs> and we want them, we are so far like myself here. I had us. We want them, we can't buy them, pick me, Alaska two times. Uno, Uno, Uno are really all slave. Since they me that work, and we see one council where get elected, I can call to me. I said, brother, where you see me, just avoid me. I <laughs> said, why? We say, Look on the road. Eh? There is no road, yes, sir. And people still like you, and you come up and see me. Me and I want to go. In my car, I say, I'm buy me a drink. I said, I'm sorry for me a water and a drink. No, you don't have to be able to say, I'm going to tell you something. 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 You don't have to be so hard. I said, I'm so hard. I'm going to tell you something. I'm wicked. What do you do? Right now, as we speak to you, there is no water in Brownstone, St. Han. Market and road, tiny cafe flush, but restaurant but in there. But eh? but there's no water. But Carla, is, 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 eh? is, but hold on, is it the same place the Prime Minister say you make to the Silicon Valley? Oh, oh my top person, yes, Silicon Valley and Chilani. <laughs> the man said, I walk Jamaican people out in the STEM school. Nigel Clark, you come out, come read budget, but you, know, you, you put the STEM school in your budget. Hmm. You say, yeah, go make STEM school, we want the STEM school. Uh -huh. All I promise you, make. come on, Jamaican people, man. PSOJ, you know, wicked too. All I people, I will live up, you know, pastors. But Beverly is a wicked a murderer because who knows what they now work in a factory? I said, I work in a factory. I'm a business. I don't know. Look out for people. You know, wicked. You know, part of it. You know, man, nobody wants to say. Because you know, what I'm saying. You is a person of a certain degree. And you know, where people look up to. I don't oh, care. I'm not this apartment. I'm not going to this apartment. Where is Mr. Williams? I said, Brown, turn up our title because the whole sentence vote Labour. And I'm one of them. I think them things. I skin their skin true. Skin their skin true. And I win that. If you win that, 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 if you
Are you still here? Well, Jeffrey, okay. Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Hold on. Yes, Carla. Yes, I'm Ulu. No, make sure to talk, man. Make sure to talk. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Carla. Jamaican people, and when it comes to parish county election, let me tell you something. Where people don't understand. You heard what? You might be a labor right. Hold on, you might be a labor right, you know. But you see, Miss Mary's son, I run as council of the PMP, and in grow in your community, and he used to come here and pick me and used to take care of him. And you say, boy, I'm going to support him, you know, car. And Miss Mary's grandson, I mean, more for him, I go to school, me used to drive a taxi, so I have to support him. But when the big election comes, I know that I know that in a year. That now in a year. But through my counselor, and then know him, and they say, let me support Miss Mary's grandson. I saw me plenty of them script too. And that, and that, see if not for them in the election. But when the big time comes, if Andrew thinks that, in bad, call election. And then we see, they have too much to hide, too much of pressure. I mean, the next thing we look on, look on private security. The Supreme Court, when they say the biggest court of the land, rule to have the private security and up till now, thousands of security. Lose their work, that they yard, no get that out of it. And we tell me, say, this a man a good man. Eh? I say, me tell you, I want them to be known as security. Show if you work overtime, they have to go pay your double. Then cut down your duty them to three duty or four duty. Three duty a week, that means I have no six duty, three fat night. You know what I stop wicked on that? You know what I stop wicked on that? Mm. What else? What else? No, mm. I tell I thought, you know, we can only say and your whole list and in crew, then we got the last mile to hold on to power. Mm -hmm. kill, we got to hold on to power because when film bomb shell come like I film bomb got drop like he want to drop down a, a Japan, you see how we they call it. I saw it, I go drop. And we, I go hold we head and we belly. I said, mighty God. Then this man did deny to. This man did deny to. Mm. Be a corruption around me. Call we can't on. be here no more. I may have a message. Mr. Smith, don't ask her a question. Yeah. I don't want to ask her the question. I've listened to her. And I just want, as an aside, to ask the chairman a question. Oh, okay. Hold on a minute, then. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Remember what we're going to say. Call a finish your point for me. You have a message. Yes, I have a message for the bright, because Mr. Kevin Blake, Mr. Kevin Blake, who does to you, so I take my hat off to you. And when I hear your all your achievement and your PhD and your this. But may I go, that is good. But may I go beg you one thing. Use common sense. Yes. Please, upon your children, children, do not get aligned to no political party. No make nobody use you as a scapegoat. If you see that they them come with, run, run. You're supposed to have a visa, take up your foot and run. Because no matter how much money you have, see the good, nice bush truck there, you might alone in a house now. Right? Live your life, do your work. Don't make no PMP, no, no JLP compromise you. Don't make them put your life fixed, Bailey. Yes. When you investigate a case, let the chips lie where it falls. Yes. Do not get compromised. Use are handsome. Brilliant young man, yeah. and we are expect you to come with young mind. And please, sir, tell your police officer them say, when a citizen commit a crime or it's alleged that they commit a crime, they are committed against the state and not by them. I'm not saying if your life commander threat, you must not defend it. Defend it to the last. But some things we had for a soldier man to a kick a woman in her belly. A woman may don't have a stick to her, nothing. 
that is wrong. Indeed. And again, Mr. Blake, the municipal police and we are going there and I mash up illegally ignore them things and I take them up. So eh, try fix that. Yes. Calling the police them, rein them in, show them make them do police work again. I wanna say things work because they are human, but when it happens, come out and condemn it and call who call up and give you hope so you care. True. Give me hope, say no, sir. This a this a this a man I mean business. Yes. Yes, a policeman, a woman, they are human being. I will respect them. Yes. But they are some fat in the get them out of them. Right. Come Not on. easy to get, get them out. Get them out. Yes, so I'll, when I heal back and I will listen. Thank and you. Jamaican people will you know, roll up on the head because you know if a, if a man ever says start, you know the second them. I mean, no man got dead. But me are dead for your cars. Mm -hmm. The man at Singapore says we're dead for your cars. Not no wrong with that. Because they okay. Because in, in light of the people saying problems in Silicon Valley. Oh yeah, but the man makes Silicon Valley. But he man knows a Silicon Valley neither. So yeah, he's see with him. <laughs> but I mean no say him, Mr. Andrew, is a new wife. Right now, when you were then there, they mean a third mile. Because the cry of the people is up on you. Indeed. Like you said, Babylon, the cry of the nation is up on you. Our country is rich. We are not poor. We are people who can't work. We're resilient. But you take over the country and a bad man ship and a sinky country just to feed yourself yes. and, your, and your, your few friends. I mean, I want to look up on you. I want to look up on you. I want to look up on you. And put them up. And, and backtrack them, search them and come down. If you don't find three quarters of them in a mix up, true, three quarters of them, yes, criminal them. Thank you, you for me. Call 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 yes, caller, thanks for calling in. All right, Mr. Simic, go ahead and ask a question to uh, Mr. Chairman, sir. Having heard all that has been said by she sounds almost like learned counsel, <laughs> you left the Labour Party some time ago to help form the NDM. Do you see anything that would make you return to the Labour Party? No way. What I consider the Labour Party and the PNP to be two teeth in party. <laughs> two teeth in party with, with two gang. With two gang. One of them is one other attached to the Labour Party and one of them is Klansman attached to the PNP. Those two gangs, just like the Labour Party and the PNP, control all the criminal them in Jamaica. You hear it, it talk about the police, talking about 100 gangs, it's only two. The PNP when, when, have, the PNP have group gangs, and the GLP have branch gangs. And they so name them, them, them different type of name. But all of them get them gone from the same place. And it's, with your with your knowledge prior to departing them and since leaving them, are you amazed at what they have been doing? No, I'm not amazed. That's why I'm fighting them tooth and nail. In any way I can, with a little bit of life, you know, say. Is three times them attack me already. Yeah, I know. What do you mean attack you? <laughs> you may not I, want to make it public, but I yeah, know. Yeah, I, I, I was at my gate on the 16th of March, 2016, and two men come to me. Two of them have gone. That was just one of their attacks. But I've had many more. My God. He has had to be very careful where he parks his car. That's right. I still have a car with two bullets all night. I know. You see, based on what I do for a living, it suits me to know certain things. Right. So what I'm saying is this. There's something that I've heard of growing up, and I can't put it to anything now. It's called moral authority. 
I have a difficulty when the person's in charge of the country don't have the moral authority to be so. Right. And then when you start to jiggle around the judiciary system, you fully intend to completely enslave the people once more. Do you know, well, this will be lost on the rest of them, but you supposed to know what I'm talking about. You know the true story why Morty Perkins didn't like Michael Manley? No. I have nothing to do with him, wife. I was oh. on the bodyguard detail when it occurred. Oh, I think it's something with Morty's daughter. Ah! We went to we went to the Jamaica School of Art together. Moti's daughter was sick. Had a, I think had a drug problem. No, 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 no. Is everybody in Jamaica make it up as it suit them? Let me tell you how it goes. When I left the Jamaica School of Art, two days after I matriculated and went through the system and thing, as I graduated, I joined the Jamaica Defense Force. Mm. Moti's daughter went to a financial institution. During her time in the latter years at art school and since then, she met and fell in love with Courtney Robb. Mm. That name may be lost on you, but it's not on the chairman. The bass player for Byron Lee and the Dragoneers fell so deeply in love that she embezzled funds and bought him a Cortina E. Oh. Was caught arrested, tried, and convicted. And in those days, it was not a case of either you pay the money or you do the time. You pay the money and you do the time. Mm. And what he came up to Washington close and asked Michael in the living room, Michael was sitting in his father's rocking chair, assist him, say, him can find the money, but him don't want the custodial sentence. And Michael said to him, he said, the good thing about being security sometimes, you know, people forget that you're there, they think you're furniture. And Michael said to him, if I use my prime ministerial powers to interfere in the jurisprudence of the Jamaican people, my father would roll in his grave. And Moti said to him, Michael, you have children too. And Michael said, let the chips fall where they may. That's where Moti got that phrase from. And he left there in a state. Long story short, rather than do the sentence, she hung herself. Oh my God. Oh, my God. So much so that years later in the Daily News, second page, a guy that used to be a bass player in a band called Saint, involved with one of Michael's daughters, and he used to abuse her, and he was up the university or the cottage them, and him come and find him hanging off of the grill of the window. Apparently, said that him tie something along and put them there and run away from the grill. Interesting story. Mm -hmm. But the headline said, Politician daughter's baby father hangs self. Moti spent the first 15 minutes of his program ranting about it. Mm -mm. Don't take my word for it. Go look up the records. It's there. We make up stories to suit us. It's like in Jamaica, dog bite man is not news. Man bite dog, everybody it's wants. News. You follow me? Yes. There are things, and the chairman knows what I'm speaking of, that Mali must have been speaking about when he said, and if night should turn, turn today, to day, a lot of people would run, run away. That gentleman, the chairman, 
made himself a target before the end them because he told certain people who shall remain nameless, not on my watch. Don't use me, master. Am I striking any notes here, chairman? Yeah, man. You're striking all the notes, right? And when Bruce got up and said, enough is enough, God, it was opening the car door for Bruce. And he was seen as a traitor par excellence. None part on Gosata. A matter of fact, let me close with this. When the former head of the Labour Party and former Prime Minister died, there was a heat wave. Yes. And some people say the gates of hell opened. <laughs> <laughs> we only want part of the story we know uh, all of the story I happen to know that him catch almost physical fight with somebody up a Belmont Road Ooh. because they want the chairman because they wanted him to endorse saying that a school was built where there was none Oh, Jesus. Ask him if I'm telling lie. I believe you. So although he's belligerent and him kick off and thing, his heart is not only in the right place. He is to be commended because God through what him go through. He has a heart. Hmm. Well, Mr. Chairman, on a philosophical point, <laughs> I, 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 you have always earned my respect I don't care what they want to say I still believe that there is a lot of goodness in you and there is a lot to be learned from you sir and that is why I will not join others on show the honor but I think that you are a good Jamaican and I'm glad that Major has now given us the full what you don't call this now? This is not an this in art in art in artwork. What you call this major? A full abstract yeah. of the different well, colors that the dress. Huh? Poetry is called chapter and verse. All right, the chapter and verse of the chairman. Chairman, there's a lot of work to be done, and here's what is true. The fight we have to take it to them. I believe that we need to raise and train a group of young leaders, chairman, who can speak true to power about what is happening and to use your life and others like yourself as example of people who mean this country well. Um, yes. Let me, let, me, let me leave you with this. Sorry, chairman. You see, if he had been allowed to put forward some of the programs that he wished to when he was in the Labour Party, certain people wouldn't be in charge now. But they were of the opinion that he was looking the leadership role for himself. Oh. Am I going too far, Chairman? No, man. You're talk it up man and when he joined and helped form the ndm the talk was sit me tell you more run things hmm. because you see if he was one of them one run things he wouldn't live our pastures now he would have been upon top of the hill looking over in the city yes there are people who have told him that he's an idiot. All he wanted was keep his mouth shut. We have not always been on the side of political sides at mesh. But Mr. Chairman, my respect. Thank you, sir. My you know, you know, when I heard about Michael Williams, you know, it was a friend of mine who called me one day. And said to me, say, you hear about the man by the name of Michael Williams? I said, no. And I think Luke was the one who helped to get his number. 
But my friend said to me that he's a rebel. So I said, mean by rebel? He said he speak and he doesn't care what he says. He call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. And I find that Mr. Chairman is exactly what the person said that you are, sir. Mm -hmm. That you don't care who it is. It could be the King of England. You want me, you want me to tell you what Edward Siaga said about it? Go ahead. Eddie said, that coolie boy cannot be controlled. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you speak exactly like you, Mr. Ch um, Sir Vincent Smith. Go ahead yeah. again. Say it again. Know, that reminds me, you know, one day, I, when I was dropped to the general sector at the Labour Party, Siaga sent out a, a new release over to me and say I must sign it and send it out. Him write it, you know. And when I read it, I make about five corrections and send it back to him. The man vex, vex, vex. That old dear, the old dear me correct anything when I'm right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there were things that he wanted him to do that he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And hence came that statement. That coolie boy cannot be controlled. My, my, my. That's why he was deputy general secretary and not general secretary. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Mr. Williams, I know you're one of the Jamaicans who will not get an order of distinction or an order of this or order of that because I, I don't think you want it. No want it. And I, and, and I think Finn Smith is one of them who won't get it either because Finn Smith is too outspoken for them. We, a young man like myself growing up, it is a pleasure to meet both of you. I have met, I have, I have met both of you physically as yet, but one of these days I know I will. And I've learned a lot from both of you. And I'm pretty much sure my artists have learned a lot from both of you. The fight continues. For the Jamaican people and for our children, children. The fight continues and let's continue the fight for a better Jamaica. It doesn't matter what party we are from. The fact of the matter is what we must look on. The piece of rock in the Caribbean ocean was the gem of the Caribbean. Where people look up to. And I personally believe that we as Jamaicans must stand up and fight for that rock. And must call a spade a spade. It doesn't matter where we are from. I never born come come. I never born a PNP or a JLP. I born as a Jamaican. And Jamaica must come first in all that we do, in all that we say. Do not let this gem of the Caribbean become the next Haiti of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Do not let this country of ours that we love so much become the next Haiti of the Caribbean. My fellow Jamaicans, both home and abroad, put away the PNP, the NDM, the JLP, the UIC, the whatever. Think about this piece of rock that we call home. Think about our children, children. What's all the Jamaica we're going to leave for our children, children? A Jamaica that is full of crime. A Jamaica that has almost trillion dollar debt. A Jamaica that is full of corruption and nepotism and cronyism. The time has come that we the people, the American Constitution speak about we the people, and I will put it over into us as Jamaicans. We the people have the power lies in our hands to make the fundamental change that we seek in this country. The change that we seek will never come from the People's National Party or the Jamaica Labour Party. It has to come from us as a people. Who we'll vote and on we, issues, and not people. There we go. Vote on issues, don't vote on party. Vote on issues, don't vote on a person. Vote for Jamaica. This country is bleeding from within. Michael Andrew Holness and I is the same age. And I don't think Mr. Holness sit down and think about the policy that he's doing. I don't think Mr. Holness sit down and think about the Jamaican people. He professes he does, but does he really do it? 
Takes cash to care. There you go. No, I don't think so. Him think about himself first. <laughs> Gentlemen, bless him. I want to tell I want to tell you thanks. But before you go, I want Mr. Williams to give his wrap up remarks to the program here. I may take two calls when you guys leave. I may, I may stay back and take two calls from the people. I don't know. Or if you guys want to stay for me to take the call, I don't know. You want to stay? Take the call, man. Yes. I have your call. Yes, me. Uh, let I put up the phone number here. For those who want to call into the program, I know somebody was calling a while ago. You can call back. The number is 954-529-8030. Call into the program. Here it is. A pleasant good night. Welcome to Make We Talk. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from California. Pardon me? All right. Good night to your panel and the two gentlemen that left. Go ahead. I wish they were there. Oh, one, I want to ask you, uh, guys, give me uh, just some feedback on the, the new promised um, commissioner, police commissioner. Oh, how much you people know about this guy? And also, um, as I as I get some information in terms of the media that he's Ellington with Ellington um, nephew, uh, and uh, they're saying that both of them are close, very close enough you know, in terms of family relation. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think about this guy? Because you know this guy has been in, like in shadows. Nobody know him. Yes, he does present up and they choose him as um, um, commissioner police. Commissioner let, police let, let me get under the GLP government. What do you think? Let Give me, me a feedback on okay. yeah, let, let me your thoughts. Uh, I hear and I listen to the program. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Mr. Smith. You want to answer that question, then, uh, Mr. Chairman, and then Luke. All right, I'm tell you quickly. You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. I can't judge you by what your family is alleged to have done. Mm -hmm. By your deeds shall ye be known. So technically, he has an advantage. No one knows of him such. So you have a clean copybook. Let's see what he writes in it. I'm willing to give him a clear time. Do, do what you've got to do. If you mess up, it's on you. But mm -hmm. I'm not expecting you or not wishing for you to mess up. I am hoping that you do very, very well. And any assistance I, in my limited fashion, can provide, I will. I don't want judge the commissioner based on who was in power when he was appointed. By your deeds shall you be known. Mm. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Um, I I don't know a lot about him, but I know he's highly educated. He joined the force why, and became an officer right away. He didn't come through the ranks. Mm -hmm. Right? He did a lot of courses in the United States and he's very, very, he's, he's the most qualified person in the police force now. And he was in the mostly in the shadows doing the the work of putting in the technical and the intelligence work the behind the scenes work that the commissioner of police anderson relied on to make the police more efficient not mm -hmm. with men on the ground or boots on the ground as major would say but with technology so mm -hmm. He is a man with a lot of techno technological information that he can transform the force to a highly technical force like how the FBI in America operate. Mm -hmm. Right? Based on the statement that Bunting made, in a while everybody was congratulating Mr. Dr. Blake, Bunting was saying, don't become political and almost rebuking him to stay neutral. 
So I would say that is not a favorite of the PNP, and I don't think he's a favorite of the JLP. I think he's a professional, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that he will remain a professional. When Gerald Anderson came into the force, I wrote him a letter, and I said to him, tell the, com tell the people in the police force to make your report to parliament and not to the Minister of National Security or the Prime Minister. Yes. And I will do the same thing to for, for Dr. Blake. Right? He's going to be appointed tomorrow. And I will write him right after that. He, he's he's going to be swearing in tomorrow? Well, the announcement, the official announcement is supposed to come tomorrow. Okay. That he is the he will be the new commissioner of police. Because although it has been spread far and wide, the official announcement does not come from the government yet. Not yet it is. Right. So, nope. As soon as that happens, I'll write mm. him. But I believe he will take the police force to a higher level. I'm hoping that he will. Okay. Right. Yes. L Luke? Uh, look, um, if he takes Major Smith as his advisor, um, I'm all, all for it. If he allows himself to be influenced by the political directorate and um, some of those oligarchs that are in the police force, then I'm going to wonder what will change, but one has to remain optimistic. Um, let us see what he does to revitalize the participation of the citizens in the decision making of the police force. If he was brave enough to change the Jamaica Constabulary Force to the Jamaica Constabulary Service and to then look at the officers that are within that have tainted the force, then it would be interesting days ahead. But um, animal farms remind me that all, all men are equal, some more than others. I just hope that Jamaicans who take the oath of office will, will remember that they have to put the country above their own personal gains. Yes. And therefore, the service that they render to their fellow men will be done with honesty and decency, and that Jamaica will be better off for the service that they render. Yeah. So, I don't know. They might pull him from out of the rabbit hat, but yeah. if he was to take on a Finzi Smith um, as advisor, and therefore we, we know that we're going to get something that is going to sort of put mm -hmm. a stem on crime and if he can stand up to the political powers that be yes then all, all the best mr blake thank you very much luke um caller welcome to the program good night where are you calling from i'm calling from sweet sweet florida here yeah, much yes sir go ahead all right good night good night uncle things good night Miss always uh, good night everybody luke everybody what we can do you know we can pray for this young man you know mm -hmm. Pray, not in the prayer, we are praying nation. And what happened, Uncle Finzi, you don't want to ask, right? If you need advice, like from you, Mr. Ratti, etc., etc., you willing to give him some advice? Yeah, man. Without hesitation. And you don't have to take it. I, I just go and tell him what I think. Country. You know, I have some people never go to Jamaica yet from up here. And mm. sometimes when I watch a program at the time, give me lunch group. I don't not, not even, even listen to know what I go on because I really, to be frank with you, I don't let me uh, see the negative side, you know? Mm -hmm. You know the positive side of Jamaica? But I just be a hypocrite, a good hypocrite in that way, you know? Because they're well welcome at Jamaica. Two go already, and one go back. Them say they need to even abandon their country, America. Mm. 
just live in Jamaica. Mm. Okay. I saw a white guy in Orlando one time. He said, no, I'll go back to Jamaica. I why? said, what? Wait, why? And he said, if you go back, you're done with America. Hmm. All right, caller. Thank you for calling in. If you go back, what? If you go back, where's the loop? I didn't hear what he said. If him go back, what happened? If him go back, him done with America. Yeah, but you know, interestingly, Jeffrey. Yes. When you look at the amount of foreign nationals that are buying property in Jamaica now, and the amount of Jamaicans that are leaving, you wonder what is it that these people say. Have you looked at the swearing in exercise of people who have applied to become citizens? of this country, you have a lot of Israelis, you have a lot of people who are coming from the Middle East, and you have to ask yourself the question, what is it about Jamaica that is attracting them, that they are now lifting up everything that they have and moving to Jamaica? And you have a woman, I'm not sure the nationality, who is on YouTube, who She's from sell Ukraine. the Ukraine, yeah, who is selling this positive side to Jamaica. I believe that if you can get the crime down, you certainly can fix those um, domestic you know, issues. You, you, know, you know, I may be wrong, Luke, and sorry to be cutting you, but I believe that that woman is, you know, the show, I can keep my mouth shut. Continue, Luke. Well, here, as we say, two sides to the coin. It's a plus because I've heard her answer some serious questions when other people have made negative comments about the country. Um, again, this is where the chairman has to recognize that we have a job to do. We have to repackage this country and help people to see beyond mm -hmm. the, 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 the negative narrative that have been created by a few. And you see like the caller, Mr. Chairman, you hear how brilliant she was able to craft her argument. That's what we need. We need real Jamaican speaking to the false without having anybody giving them a script or saying that they have an interest. We need to promote more of that, Jeffrey, and I hope that you will have that call, a call in and, and, and become a panelist on your show because she speaks true to power. Yes. There has to be a change, and there are predictions now that some people's sons are going to become the next prime minister of this country. It, it, it's so sad because when you look at it from when you see all of the things that are wrong and have been wrong for a long time and you think that you have to pick between the less of the two evil that mm -hmm. shouldn't be a decision for any jamaican going into an election yeah. the decision that we make to choose yeah. people to serve us right at both at the local and the and, and at the parliamentary level yes should be people who have had a track record of doing things to advance the welfare of the whole human being of the society of Jamaica. And it is not beyond us. It's just that yeah. there are people who have understand this level of skullduggery that mm -hmm. if they do yeah. for a faithful few, they secure a future for themselves and their children, forgetting right. that wait, wait, Jamaica wait. is... Hmm. Sorry, Luke, we have a call online. Caller, go ahead. Welcome to Make We Talk. Welcome to Mecca Talk, Mr. Jeffrey T. How are you, sir? I'm here looking and living, sir. Okay, good for you. I'm good. Here and I keep on the land. Okay, good night to the panel, especially my brethren. Lou, question for you. Greetings, my brother. The present commissioner, did the present commissioner indicate that he's not, he, he will be resigning? He's not yes, seeking he to renew his contract? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He, he, he did. No, the reason why, because I've been out of the loop, so I uh, know. But, you know, Jeffrey, I am presently in Jamaica. Oh, yeah. And and today, I was at a particular place. Where are you seeing uh, all the prosperity? <laughs> well, let us not get into that. <clears throat> today, I was at a particular place and a car key suit police happened <clears throat> to enter the facility. Right? I won't call any names. 
And we had a long discussion about the present commissioner of police and the incoming commissioner. So and interesting. The, he, he had a lot of praises for the incoming commissioner. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, he said to me, you know, he's a Garfield. We can only say he's the incoming. Nothing has been confirmed. As a gentleman, one man says, we have not heard an official statement from the government and it has not been gazetted or the whole nine yards. And he said to me, this is somebody that flew through the ranks, joined the force in 2002, and automatically became, after, after basic training and the laws, he became uh, an assistant superintendent of police. But I, I tempt, and I asked him, why is it that someone like Fitz Bailey wasn't considered, in his opinion, and of course, he was in uniform, and he says that we, I can't really get into that because I'm, I'm, I'm on the job, number one. Number two, I'm in uniform. But the consensus that he said to me, the consensus that he has gathered, that the entire rank and file and the hierarchy of the force is in, they are, they, the both heads are in support of him. But I asked him, what about the present commissioner of police? You know what he said to me? Mm -hmm. The present commissioner of police is a paper pusher. From the Minister he, of National Security. Go ahead, yes. <laughs> right, he's a paper pusher. That's what he said. And he, he even made mention that this gentleman, when he left the military and he took a break, he advises the prime minister on crime. He advises the former Minister of National Security and Crime and the, po the Police Public Service Commission has gave him the job. And there were other people that were literally overlooked. And it just brings forward the argument of Peter Bunting today when he came out and says, the only thing he's asking the Commissioner of Police to do, leave the politics out of his job make parliament deal with anything have to do constitutionally let the parliament deal with that but going back to this guy kevin blake when you look at this guy accolades and his achievement if this gentleman cannot transform the jamaica constabulary hmm. i don't see who can the man mm -hmm. the, the, the man have some accolades in the prime minister jamaica has it <laughs> because this man, I believe this man is overqualified for the job. But I heard the chairman said earlier that he was one of the person who was institutionalized. He was responsible for the for the transformation of the digital force, of the digital force, and the of the intelligence also today. I have heard a former commissioner, uh, I'm sorry, a former assistant commissioner, our deputy, said that this man has traveled overseas. And when he has traveled overseas in reference to their international partners, this man has got a high grade in the class. So again, we have to just give this man a chance. Let us see what he's all about. But at the end of the day, one thing I'm glad for, the opposition man, Peter Bunting and National Security, did call it out that he needs to be the commissioner of police and he needs not to report to the JLP nor the PMP. And I yes. believe if we get this done and if this gentleman carry out his, the mandate that he will be given, I think we will have a better society. I don't know. Okay. All right? Thank you very much for calling in. All right. Talk good show good. host Garfield Reed. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much for calling. Do so you then, know? Um, do you know what ahead. he has just highlighted? Yes. The distinct difference between the Jamaica Defence Force and the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The Jamaica Defence Force recruits people to be officers. There are people who okay. come up through the ranks, but they recruit people to be officers. So they don't have 
the squaddy mentality. Mm. Nobody now has no secret for them. They don't fraternize. They arrive with a sense of authority. There's a saying, there are no bad soldiers, there are bad officers. Hmm. You can create an officer card in the JCF that mirrors this situation. Nobody have nothing on them. They don't hug up with nobody at certain rank levels. They do the job and they give orders and they are lawful orders and they are straightforward with it. Yes. If you can create the officer corps in the JCF along those lines. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I think we're going to wrap up now. Luke, George Cook? We're yeah. going to wrap up now. Um, can you give your, your, your close? Hold on for me. Again, call. Jeffrey. Again, call. Jeffrey. Hold on for me. Call coming. Hold on. Hello, good night. Welcome to the Make We Talk program. Good night. Good night, Tom. Good night, sir. Go ahead. Great, greetings, brother. Yeah. Mr. Finzi. Yes, sir. And Mr. Jeffrey, whenever time Mr. Jeffrey is keeping a program, if it, as often as I can get Mr. Finzi and Mr. Williams, we well, I mean, appreciate it. We learn a lot. Yes. From these men, a lot. And Mr. Finzi, are any son? Any son still like you? Them I, I, hope, I have three sons. Again. And they all mm -hmm. have one thing in common. Mm -hmm. They speak their minds and they don't apologize for doing it. Just like their father. I, I did my best right, to bring them up that way. If it don't make right, sense yeah, to right, you, you, you must just say it don't make sense. I don't care who it's coming from. Yes. All yeah. right, then. Okay, Carlo. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you for calling in. Yeah. There you go. It's the Mech We Talk program. It is now a minute before 11 o'clock, a minute before 10 o'clock in Jamaica. We're speaking mm -hmm. to Robert Finzi Smith, security consultant, Luke George, who human rights activist, and chairman of the National Democratic Movement, Mr. Michael Williams. We had our good friend, security consultant, also Herb Nelson Jr., one of Jamaica's finest statesmen of all time. Who knows his stuff. And by the way, just to let everybody know that on May 11th, the call to action group will be having a demonstration in front of the, a protest rather, well, still demonstration in front of the Jamaican Council in um, New York City. Now, May, it can't be May 11th. Oh, May 11th. Oh, yeah, May 11th. Yes. Okay. May 11th, 2024. Mm -hmm. For the atrocities that has been carried out on the Jamaican people by this government. The level of corruption and the level of nepotism and cronyism. It will be live on the Mequi Talk YouTube channel and other various media houses. The Jam Talk Vibes radio station will be carrying it live also. And, you know, Jamaicans must come out in their numbers. It doesn't matter who wants to dub us as the Dirty 30 or dub us as a member of the Labour Party or the PNP. We are Jamaicans and remain Jamaicans. And we will stand up for what we believe in. If the, if the corruption and the nepotism not carrying on the country and damaging Jamaican reputation abroad, then I don't know what else is doing it. Gentlemen, we're going to say thanks for coming on to the program. Luke, you were saying something before we go? No, uh, Jeffrey, I've said that the Mr. the new the new appointed commissioner, if and when that is official, I wish every Jamaica to just play our part in whatever way we can make this island better. I think that there is a wealth of persons that are in Jamaica who are skilled and really could we, we need to get them involved um, you have two other gentlemen on your program tonight uh, and certainly Herb um, we have that diaspora com 
component that we can benefit from the experiences and the knowledge. I don't see why we're not doing better. I don't see why we can't become the envy of the Caribbean again. Um, I don't see why we can't give the assurance to our citizen home and abroad that this country is being run and it's not just being micromanaged. Um, but we as citizens have to step up to the plate. We have to say what it is that we want and we have to want to represent that change that we want to see. And certainly it's not just to have these programs, but it's to have a program of action. And this is why Mr. Chairman has a tremendous amount of um, work to do is to put forward those arguments that are going to advance the people participating in the decision making, taking away the power from the persons that were elected who have now gone mad with power, but putting it back into the hands of the Jamaican people where we say how things we'd like to see things go. And it's not about the individual, it's about what is in the best interest of community and country. And so I say to everybody on your program, on the panel and to your listenership, th this is where the work starts. And we all have to put our shoulders to the wheel to ensure that we play our part and we are not just being viewed as this, the silent majority to our democracy. We have to fight for this democracy. Yes. Um, for those, what did I say? Did I say, didn't I say May 10th? May 11th. May Sorry, 11th. May, uh, did I say May 10th? You said no, 11th. May, May 11th. Sorry, it's May 10th. I do apologize. Okay. It's May 10th. Thanks okay. for the corruption, the correction rather, the corruption. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the that, correction. That, that, that is what is affecting Jamaica. The cor yes, the corruption. Yeah. I think I think I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna um say good night now. I want to uh, say thanks to. Pardon me. Let me just say one thing and move. Go ahead. I want people who have been here from the start and been listening to take note of one particular thing. The chairman and I don't always see eye to eye, <laughs> but we concentrate on what between us is making sense rather than the little trifling back and forth. Jamaicans will agree with people and the wanting them disagree on start a war. Yes. Maybe our ages have collectively gained us the wisdom to know the difference. But I just want people to notice if you start from start probably people felt that them two men have a fight. But he holds his point, I hold mine. But it doesn't mean that we don't find a common ground that is good for this country. True words, sir. I always say, to, even in my meetings when I would end there, when they're proposing things, I say, when you propose something, ask yourself this question, is it good for Jamaica? Yes. First. Mm -hmm. If it is good for Jamaica, then we could hear it. If it's not good for Jamaica, hold it. Yes. Hmm. Gentlemen, the love of country. What a philosophical evening, man. Ah! <laughs> All right. I knew we would convert him. <laughs> you, you have the last word. <laughs> I want to say thanks to everyone for coming on. Thanks for the caller from Negril who spoke about a parish that Westmoreland and a district Negril that has put Jamaica on the world map and it's being neglected by the two political parties, the two political tribes in this country. And I want to say thanks to the call. I want to say thanks to my good friend here on YouTube, JamaicanTV.com, who don't leave me out at all. He's always here with us and all... The other rest who has been here with us. Thank you all for liking, sharing, and subscribe. Thank you all very much. And remember, me still ask for some help to buy that laptop. So if you all can assist me to buy a laptop to carry on this work, I never asked nobody for any help. But I'm asking tonight again. I need some help to buy a laptop. My Zell and everything is on the screen going across there. A $50 or $20 can help. 
Mr. Chairman, how much you put in philosophically? What in the name of Jesus in here right now? You know, I'm, 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 I'm a like virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, answer the question there at all. Philosophically, the chairman wishes you well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's good. Listen to me. You, 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 you know what I love about this program, gentlemen? I love the idea that we can come on here. Our our, our YouTube chatters, our, our our YouTube subscribers who are in the chat room. They will criticize us. They will call us all sort of name. Some of them not respectful, but some respectful. But I love at the end of the program, that's a great program. I enjoy the program. That's what I love. And they stand by us. And as I always said, do not take everything that we say for gospel. Go and Google it. Google whatever we say. Make sure you know things about your country. You have a phone. Jamaicans take your phone and type in the Constitution of Jamaica and get to know your fundamental rights. Find out what them want to change. There you go. And if you agree with it. You know, I wake up one morning and find that you have a new constitution you knew nothing about. There you go. What about this one? <laughs> you know? You have, to know? you have to know the one you want to change before you can change it. There you go. Because a lot of you are, And you don't sink the clutch, you will wreck the gearbox. There you go. A lot of Jamaicans have never read the, the, a copy of the Constitution. I've never seen it. It's too hard to read. It is. Yeah. It, it, it has some subsection, subsection, it's and subsection that is unbelievable. So tonight, as we close tonight, is May 10th, not May 11th. May 10th. May 10th. May 10th. Jeffrey is May 10th, 2024, in New York City. The Jamaicans from Brooklyn, Flatbush, and all over will be coming out. And it will be live on the Mequita Jeffrey Tavares YouTube channel. I pray to God that everything goes well. So until you hear our voice again, on behalf of Robert Finzi Smith, Luke George Cook, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Michael Williams, our good friend Herb Nelson Jr., the producers of this program and those who helped me with the, the posters of this program to come on live. I want to say thank you all very much. I want to say thanks, especially to Luke. Well, especially to, to, to both gen the three gentlemen on the line here. There are four of them. Who, No matter what hours I call them, if they can't come on, they come on. They never tell me no. Sometimes I don't even ask Finn to see me. They'll show it to him and he <laughs> doesn't care. We're having a program and Mr. Simit come on. The same with Mr. Chair, with same with Mr. Chairman. I can call him at the appointed time. And from here's the time he'll come on. Gentlemen, I want to say thank you very much. And I want to say what we need to do going forward for this year is get some young people on the program. Some young Jamaicans. I, I had I had the honor a couple of days ago to have my good friend Gabriela Morris from the People's yeah. National Party, Senator Gabriela Morris, who came on with two young persons. A, a new young counselor for the the um the the the, the whatever the, what the division is that again oh lord is in Andrew Ant, 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 Anthony Hilton's constituency Duane Park Duane Park yeah yes the new counselor for the People's National Party Duane Park she was on the platform along with the future president of Uli, of um, University of West Indies Gill Uli Gill president he came on and we, a couple of days before that we had um some other young people that came on one of them is a jamaican but she, she studied here in the united states and they gave some lively discussion about where they want to see their country going two of the young ladies who were on said that listen to me i will die in this country before i go overseas go live all we need in Jamaica is a proper infrastructure, a government that we can trust, a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. 
And when you listen to Jamaicans, the young Jamaicans speak about that, it tell you that, hey, we're still a beautiful country. We're still the gem of the Caribbean. It's just for us to come together and change the fundamental problems that we face in this country. And I hope it all makes sense tonight. I hope you all continue to support this channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Continue sharing this channel to every knuckle and cranny of the globe. That we stand for Jamaica. We don't stand for any political party. We're not being paid by any political party. We're not being given a job by, up by the Montego Bay Regional Hospital to be our project manager. <laughs> We're not given a job at Montego Bay Metro. Because what? We spread propaganda for the Labour Party on Facebook and on YouTube and, 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 and want to defame people's character. We don't do those things. The Wilfred Rattigan reason for Rattigan program don't do those things. And I sure to hell can't do it either. Because if I do it for number one, I'll be expelled from the, the Tavares family. <laughs> we have to have respect. We grow up with respect. And we must speak what is going on in our country. Not because you're a member of a party. It cannot be. But because you're a member of a party, you can't speak about your party. And that is why Mr. Chairman is not a part of the, the, the Labour Party anymore. Because he stand up for what he believes in. Let us stand up for Jamaica. The country that is envied by a lot of people around the world. And we must continue fighting for the poorer class of Jamaicans. And I will continue to fight for the people who don't have any water. I'll continue to fight for the people who don't have a voice. Because this program is the original program. This program here is a Poor People Defender program. The original one. And I want to say to you all tonight, we have a beautiful country. Do not let this country fall like how hate is falling. And on that note, I want to say thanks again to Fincy Smith, Luke George Cook, Michael Williams, Herb Nelson Jr., and all the callers who call in. May God bless you, and may God bless Jamaica land we love. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah, yeah. philosophical. Philosophically, night, don't you mind? I'm going to stop now. We're at the last minute, you know, Jeffrey. Here you know. Philosophical. Uh, right, yeah. that called the Aristotle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and since you since you're making room for the young people, we are going to recycle ourselves and come again in the young people section. But that's a good move. That's yes. a good move. The and voice of the young as a matter of fact, look, I am depending on you to get no, some no. young people. Hold on, look. I want to get some young people from the inner city of Jamaica. Remember, I live in Mona. Well, I don't care where you want to live. <laughs> so, so what, else? what about Tavern and August Town, Auntie? Stand up close. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't, I don't get involved with the Tavern and the, Jeffrey. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, we Jeff, that's cool. Oh, that? yeah. Give them a message. Tell oh, them that. when them leave school, don't go look at job. Tell them try own something. Yes. And, 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 and need, of this country. Own something. I, I need some young people to come on. And I, I, I don't know if both Mr. Chairman and Sir Finzi Smith can assist. I know Luke is no, going to do it. I know Luke is going to do it. I need okay. to get some young people. Okay, Jeffrey. All right. I, need, I, I need their views and their vision of where this country is going. Mm -hmm. We cannot as a people continue like this. Yeah, man. We 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 we
When the game gets rough and this life just seems so tough, make we talk, my people, make we talk. When this town becomes an ugly place, don't let it erase the smile from your face. Make we talk, people, make we talk. Conversation is the key A guiding light for you and me Spark a talk and you will see Conflict solver A to Z World leaders master the art of self-defense Just by talk So people make we talk Hey, we're living in a world that on ourselves we must depend Make we talk People Unity strength Make we reason Make we talk If we, we see corruption in any shape or form We are going to highlight it Make, Make we, we talk. talk Jeffrey Tavares represent Yard and Brad of the entire diaspora as long as it affects the life of our nation, uncover the truth, make we reason, make, make we talk. talk. And we don't care about no vum va viva va. No upper echelon, nobody's not above the law. As long as it now help Jamaica, make, make we, we talk. talk. Make we talk. Unity strength. Make we reason. Make, make we, we talk. talk. If we see corruption in any shape or form, we are gonna highlight it. Make we talk. Jeffrey Tavares represent Yard and Broad of the entire diaspora. As long as it affects the life of our nation, uncover the truth. Make we reason. Make, Make we, we talk. talk. And we don't care about no vum va viva va. No upper echelon, nobody's not above the law. As long as it now help Jamaica. Make, Make we, we talk. talk. Make we talk.